Hello, welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattoo artists, apprentices, and collectors are joining live events, sharing their tattoos and art, as well as creating art together across the globe. If you haven't already, you can find the mobile app and uh, in the Apple App Store and Google Play. And once you have the app, you can find all of the awesome events going on weekly, as well as replays of all the past events. Replays are in the library and include paint jams, Spanish and Italian speaking art jams, the Equinox party where we had visuals from Android Jones and music from Aja Lu, followed by great artists discussing art as they painted together. There are history talks and interviews and lots more. So definitely take a peek around the library. So much great content for free. We also have a lot of really awesome courses available that are paid for. If you head to reinventingthetattoo.com, including artists like Bob Tyrell and Tony Urbanic. This is where you can find and join the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon, which is a culmination of Guy Aitchison's educational life work. This is a yearly subscription and that gives you access to many videos and webinars, a huge book of in-detail information to better yourself as a tattoo artist or supplement your apprenticeship and admission into the regular Monday drawing exercises where you can zoom in with Guy to get feedback as we all grow together. I've noticed a huge improvement with my own art as well as all of the regulars that join us. Coming up on May 18th is a great seminar from Andre Malcolm who will be going over his designing of a koi sleeve. This is $99 and you can register now through the app or on the website. Our regular shows include reinventing drawing groups with Jason Leeser on Sundays and Mondays at 9 a.m. with Jake Meeks. And on Thursdays at noon, such as today, we have the Tattoo Collecting Podcast with Jordan Rookus and Fawn Baker, where they interview tattoo collectors about their journeys. Today, they will be sitting down with Ben Thomas. Before I pass this on to Fawn and Jordan, I want to say thank you to our awesome sponsors since they make it possible for us to bring this to you for free. So thank you to Inkjet Stencils. You can check out their sponsor area in the main menu of the app to learn about how you can get free samples of their stencils mailed to you. Thank you to Raw Pigments. They make acrylic free organic vegan inks from industry professionals. And thank you to Dermalize Pro who are a great resource for all stages in tattoo healing. I will now pass this on to the Tattoo Collecting Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Tattoo Collecting Podcast. Welcome, welcome. Fawn Baker, Ben Thomas and uh, Jordan Ruggis, myself. Me. Jordan. It's been a while. I know. I'm I back. feel like we were all forgetting what your face looked like. I'm back. I know. I hope you guys didn't forget about me. I was uh, gone on vacation for yeah, almost like three weeks, like two weeks straight, but I'm probably teetering on like three weeks. Sounds rough. It was it was great. It was great. But <laughs> I tell you what, I love I love being at work and I love being, you know, I, know, I love being at Red Tree. So it does feel bad being gone for so long. I love being on vacation. Yeah, the vacation, it was great. It was great. But I missed everybody. I was ready to come back when I came back. You like what you do. Makes me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we have had some pretty good shows. Uh, it's kind of playing by the seat of my pants, running things on my own, which I, I don't think it was awful. But like, we didn't have our whole studio set up. Yeah, thank you for doing an awesome job with that, though. Oh, I was trying. It lets me know. It lets me know the weak points in our equipment, which is like we need a nice gimbal. I need to figure out what I want for a laptop. I've been talking about this for a minute. I need to pull the trigger on a new laptop. Yeah. But anyways, um, I think we had some really informative shows. I had a show where it, Lauren and I were just uh just kind of like talking about my tattoo history, and like she asked me a few questions here or there. We derailed a little bit, but it was a really good discussion between Lauren and I and then last week I was just walking around Red Tree just kind of like hopping into everybody's booth talking to them talked to two tattoo virgins oh yeah yeah first time getting tattooed yep. you happened to walk upon them yep he Corey was setting up for her tattoo and her client was sitting there she was making a few adjustments to it and I was asking about his other tattoos he was like this is my first I was like oh Corey could I borrow him so I took him out in the garage. We talked for like 20 minutes, like how nice. we found Corey, how, you know, he talked a little bit about um, while he was in the service, like all of his buddies were getting tattooed and he wasn't, he wasn't like against it. He just hadn't decided what he wanted or where and had to talk about that a little bit. Um, and then I camped in Derb's room for like 
I thought it was only like a half hour, but it was like an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we got like dirt. Probably some golden. golden oh, yeah. Yeah. Dirt was sharing some, that. like, of, of course, tattoo history and some, like, you know, product knowledge and things like that. But if you're watching that part of last week's video, you can watch Derb like set his station up from like clear, like plain station to like covering it, to putting his tray cover on to like all the way to filling the caps. You get to see him like close up, like setting his machine up and putting the barriers on it and covering it and wrapping it. And like, so if you're into that sort of thing, you can watch Derb set up step by step while you get to hear a little bit of a history lesson and some other tattoo talk um but as much as i say we're not like a tutorial kind of show for tattooers last week there is a lot of hidden knowledge if you really want to learn from like my coworkers, our coworkers, us. Like there's yeah. there's just a lot of hidden tattoo knowledge right in that show, just in casual conversation. Like we were just having fun talking. Um, That's really cool. But That's I think last hear. week was actually a, like if you've, if you've never sat and watched an entire show all the way through, I think last week was a really good one. I wish I could have gotten back to Cam's room, but I didn't realize we had already been going for like three hours and 10 minutes. So it was like, oh, okay. See you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, so it was a pretty abrupt like chop off. So so I think I think we should go to Red Tree more often and just kind of talk with the collectors. I mean, there's there's 11 of us in the building tattooing. So always someone, any given there's always day, someone to talk to. Yeah, any I mean, given day, absolutely. even if like our, our buddies and coworkers aren't really up to talk, I bet their clients might be. And if we can catch them on breaks. Um, I don't know. I just think it was like with, 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 right. the, with the exception of the whole episode was shot off of an iPhone and like Maybe my, my, my uh, yeah, but my my iPad was like on standby in the corner so I could have grabbed that at any time if my phone went down or anything but um, it definitely lets me know that like we need to get a really nice gimbal and a laptop and like the and station that I work off of that we should could be create our red a, I was gonna, station. I was just going to say that we could create a station kind of like that and just have another one of those where yep. we have the arms that come off of it so we can put the we can put a camera on there we can set a laptop up laptop up on it yeah I just want to get use a couple mics that can come off of it so this camera that i've got pointed at ben right now this is our super nice camera it's 4k it's broadcasting it's like got gyroscopic stabilization that's what we need when we're at red tree showing off artwork and zooming in close the lighting's not the best in here but this camera that's on ben right now yeah exactly what she said amazing yeah i mean these guys are good but they're for like stationary shooting where the one that we just had on ben this one is intended to be like walked around with and like action shots filmed with it yeah like just playing around we can get in so close on like tattoos going on that you can like see the little ink puddle like making little splatters oh it's, it's so awesome nice. you can see the in- i was i was walking around getting good foot footage of it uh when you gave the camera to me that one day mm-hmm. and i was going around just taking videos of everyone's tattoos and stuff i was like getting down on keith's tattoo and i'm just watching like literally like the little injections in it and it's got such a good frame rate that it, like, you can just see it and so I'm clearly so impressed at, with this, that camera. at that close yeah yeah absolutely that's, the, that's a camera that can definitely help with it but i'm sure there's other ones as well this is going to get some good ones i bet do you know what frame rate that is um it depends on what we set it to but we can set it to a really incredibly high frame rate mm-hmm. probably just lowers the resolution a bit but uh i mean i i would have to I usually imagine, it seems like but... that's what the cameras do it looks like the higher frame rate lower resolution there's like this awesome middle ground you can usually find yep. if you're not doing slow motion but, but then also, you do slow motion i was thinking once we get this like mobile stand that's so got like laptop couple cameras walk around camera gimbal like once we get this little portable thing with like maybe a boom mic overhead once we get that then we can just like show up at conventions and just have like this little robot looking thing in front of us. We'll just have to name it. What would we call it? What would we call our little podcast? Let's not rush that. I feel like a little time to marinate. All right. Maybe it'll like come that, to ben. us throughout the day. I like that, Ben. Two on but the spot. Come up with a no, bro. We, we fucked up. What mm-hmm. if we just call him number three? Should we get a should we get a little like raspberry and like program him to like move around put the wheels on some motors so it can choose where that's it wants doing to go. too doing, much doing that's too doing much too much like three seconds. i no, just want to have no, a leash on it and be able to pull it behind me that's all that's all we got to do 
<laughs> that's where my mind went. Instantly. Yeah, Instantly. it'll be when we go to conventions, it'll be number three and Ben following us everywhere. I'm in. Let's do it. Cool. I'm You're obligated. Busy, You're obligated now. Yeah, so, I think that it's kind of necessary, though, just to have that, that thing at Red Tree. I think that's a good idea. So Not the, the reason part, but... you weren't here for last week was, okay. I got so snatched had, up. Let's see. How many trips did you take? <laughs> you did. <laughs> you did get snatched up. <laughs> <laughs> so recently you've done, was it Washington? Um, yeah. So Washington, then so, Zion, well, a couple then months, yeah. Miami. Two months ago, we went to Washington. Um, a month before that was out in Vegas, but so Vegas to Washington, but then, uh, so Derb and I last year, Derb, me and Brian, and then some other guy from the UK, I didn't know who he was, but he wanted to do the angels landing hike at Zion in memorial of his mother who died mm -hmm. and like do this, we're going to do this whole like walk for memorial, a memorial for her. And he like, you know, told Derb, asked Derb about it. Derb was like, Hey, you want to do this hike? And he's trying to get this hike together. We were supposed to do it last year. Then COVID hit. Didn't end up doing it, so we ended up, uh, you know, like a month ago or a month or two ago. Derb hit, you know, wanted to, want to do it again. Yeah. So we I, went out to Zion. I was able to go the first time. I was kind of bummed, but second round, I was able. Were you gonna go the first time? Oh man. Yeah, I was invited to go as well. I just couldn't, I couldn't get it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's understandable. You'll go. Yeah. You'll go, but yeah, Zion was uh, was awesome. We spent five days out in Zion. Um. Did as much as we could there. Joseph Hefs came out, joined us. So who's Joseph Hicks? He works, he owns Reverent Tattoo out in Vegas. He just does a little shop. Just a little he tiny. He just does these little tattoos, little tiny right? Things. He's got these a little couple, tiny, he's got simple a couple, line work. couple followers, just does these small pieces, these little things on girls' butts. Just a little. <laughs> no, he does these beautiful. Oh, why don't you do a sc screen share of some of Joseph's stuff? He loves sharing videos of like the stencil reveal, but. I like yeah, the way Joseph is an amazing, amazing tattooer. Someone I've looked up to for a long time. I've just always really loved his work. So I got a chance to work with him last year and met him. And now we got a chance mm -hmm. to go hiking with him for a week. That was, it was awesome. Yeah. I haven't met him and hung or, out with him well, yet. It was only one day we hiked with him, but got to go out there for a week and then hike. But one of the things I like, he and his wife always post the, um, like their sensual reveal videos, which a lot of tattooers do. But one of the things that I like is they actually take a few minutes. Like these videos are usually like three to five minutes long and they're actually talking to the collector that's about to get the tattoo. So you get a little bit of the backstory and why. And um, I, I just think it's kind of thoughtful to like share that little bit of the collector, uh, like of the collector's story on his story, the way that he does. Yeah, he does a good job with that. He also gets a lot of flack for the fun he has with all the stuff that he does, but everyone's always fair game. Like, I mean, people, his people, wife's holding the camera. Literally so... his wife's doing all of it. Like, <laughs> yeah. And like, it, he, the thing he, he was talking to me about it and he's like, he's like, I don't even like want these girls to do this anymore, but he's like, literally I'll be wiping the stencil on there. She'll be taking a video and they'll be shaking their ass. He's <laughs> like, they don't get a bunch of people that are hating on me for it. Well, I mean, you can't help it if you're working on it. like exhibitionists, it's okay. He's like, most of these girls are models and stuff. So that's what they want. Do do I'm what feels comfortable. A little booty in the day. Little booty. Just a little booty. Well, looks like um, Sandy's got our our uh, screen share disabled. I'm not sure if Sandy can hear this. Sandy, <laughs> let's fix that. <laughs> Sorry Thanks, about Sandy. That. That's all good. There we go. Search bar. <laughs> <laughs> fair, bet, Sandy. Fair, fair assumption did that uh did that work let's see yep perfect jordan suddenly hyper conscious of this <laughs> yeah right no we don't porn at this computer smart that. smart it's too public that's his wife <laughs> So Todd Torres that's, just that's messaged Joe. me. He might be joining us. This is Joe. They're the two nicest people ever. Yeah, like, it's so funny when you yet. when you see him, you just he's kind of like intimidating looking, you know, he's totally tattered up, big old buff guy and all that. But you meet him, he's like the most disarming, nice person ever. Like all he wants to do is talk about crystals and like his spiritual journey. <laughs> Pull up one well, of his stencil reveals that we were talking about. Oh man, look at that. <coughs> if 
Oh, there's one. <coughs> Where? Oh, I guess she might be showing off her whole tattoo. <coughs> You're fine. Excuse me. There you go. And you just passed an angel's lady, did you? Oh, hey. It's us. There's only 5,000 likes on it. There's only 5,000 likes on only this Only 5,000. Look at Brian. Hey. I just love him. That's me. That's Dave. <laughs> That's me again. No. <laughs> I don't know if you saw me. I don't know if you've seen that, that I have sunglasses on. <laughs> That's Joe. Wait, can you see his note? You can't see his feet. Us fuckers and barefoot. We are 1,500 feet up right now, and we are at the beginning. Of, no, we're not 1,500 feet up. Right there, we're probably 1,000 feet. We still have to ascend all of this all the way up, and then we hang out at the top up there. I like when you use words like ascend. Ascend. You can see that little trail of people up there. Oh, yeah. Little, you see those little, bloop, bloop, those aren't bloops. trees. Those, little, that's bloop, bloop. people. Yeah, little trails of people. I didn't realize it was going to be that people-y, but I mean, I guess everybody talks about this hike and wants to do it. I guess I should have known it was going to be like wall-to-wall -wall people the whole time. It really is. It, it's worth it to still do that one time. You'll be safe. What if, now, what is there... Are there better times of day to go or better times of the it year really, or is it just super as busy right now? Early, as because. early as you can go in the day for sure because you only have so much time. You have to be done by like five o'clock because there's shuttles that take you out to these areas. There's areas where cars can go in Zion and that's not very far. All the good areas you take a shuttle to. And so you got to take a shuttle to these areas and the shuttles only run okay. certain times a day at certain things. So it's almost kind of like it's inconvenient. It's very inconvenient the way the shuttles work because so you also wait two hours to get a fucking and shuttle all right so let's be real heaven forbid and i mean worst case case scenario you accidentally want i know this is a cliff don't get me wrong but you accidentally wander off trail and you missed the last shuttle they just gonna leave you out there yeah you gotta walk back it's like eight miles or something oh that's eight, not undoable it's not undoable hours of walking yeah but yeah you have to do it uh it's four hours of walking with gear i'm sorry i went this backpack really you could probably get three miles an hour i'm sure like you could <laughs> there's <laughs> no well gear. see the other thing is it is like that because the other thing is too there's no service there's no service for emergency calls there's no service for anything it'd be like that look at your watch it's crazy <laughs> Well, I guess if that's the case, you don't miss the shuttle, huh? Yeah, so you got to be done. You just got to plan it accordingly and be done at the right time. But the hike also takes like four hours. <coughs> so you got to account for all that. I'm a sucker for mermaid. Tennis. If there was no people, it would take an hour. It would take two hours. I just love the scale of his work. It's all so giant. And it's like, oh, you want a skeleton with some tarot cards? I got you. Giant. I know he's he's obsessed with his Bishop Juan too. He loves his Bishop Juan. A year ago when I was there <coughs> at a shop working, he was talking up that wand. I'm not gonna sit and talk up the wand all day because I'm unbiased on it, but I do like hearing good things about things. Uh, <coughs> laying out stuff <coughs> that size is insane to me. It's really more of a challenge than you would think. Oh. There's a lot of tricks to it. I remember when we laid out my um, back it was five sheets six sheets mm -hmm. all taped together and i remember rich just looking at me like bro if you move i will murder your face mm -hmm. in the nicest politest big giant teddy bear way possible um but yeah it was daunting it was real daunting <coughs> Have you guys seen the uh, wide format tattoo stencil printers? What? No. Um, I I have. I feel like I'm not going to say there's not applications for them. Um, I was a print dork for a long time and know a lot about direct to garment printing and different different kinds of how that should work. And the concept behind it is so simple that I was kind of mad that I didn't think of it first. <laughs> it was one of those like, oh, so you took a printer and changed the ink in it. Okay. <laughs> I see you. I see you. Yeah. Yeah, I, tr I bought one of those. Yeah, I don't even want to get into that much. I don't know. I, I wanted to get into it and I spent like $500 on all the materials and, and it ended up being not working the printer and all that. Um, I was so bummed out about it. Yes. And I couldn't return it because I put the good, I put that ink in it and you do that and it avoids all warranty yeah. and is a $500 printer and I put the ink in and then it doesn't fucking work. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot I was almost going to name drop on who I, who 
all that came from. Yeah, don't do but I don't want to do that. Um, I was a certified technician for uh, one of the largest print manufacturer companies to work at a little tiny t-shirt shop here in town a few jobs back. And it was like such a, a wealth of useless, very specific knowledge. Um, but it was fun to learn about the intricacies of the machine and like being the one guy that can be right. like, oh, you guys have been doing it wrong all day. Watch this. Ah, there you go. <laughs> um, it, was, it was a lot of fun, but the wide format, it, it, it baffles me because the what it takes to plot that size of an image and, and then to transfer it onto something else like that that skill is see is i feel like the wide format is less intimidating because it's so big like all you got to do is just make sure your material is lined up and once your material is lined up you can actually like see the plotter rolling back and forth and either like depositing the line or like moving the whole material back and forth depending For on whether sure. it's printing or plotting um for me it almost like hmm what? removed a lot of uh mystery on how printers work like watching right. watching the large format printers right. work where i'm at is do we need to have oh it's todd, oh, hey, todd. what's up we have a surprise guest today <coughs> um but but like it's i don't know my back piece for instance took eight pieces of stencil paper mm -hmm. um it was perfectly symmetric in all directions. So it was incredibly difficult to lay. And there were a lot of like challenges with making sure that things lined up like geometrically and anatomically with me. Um, and I guess all I'm saying is it didn't take that long to <coughs> glue those pieces of stencil together right. and thoughtfully like take our time and, you know, treat the skin first and you know like lay the stencil dry a few times and make sure it like wrapped and formed to the body and that's actually a huge trick is like just lay the stencil dry while the skin is totally dry and free from residue and because the the paper that this like the stencil paper itself any paper a dollar bill you know once you yeah, fold yeah. a dollar bill once it always has that crease yeah. so the paper itself is going to have a memory so when you take that large <laughs> stencil and you tuck it over the body it's gonna almost but when you actually put your solution on after you've done that it's gonna want to tuck back to where it's got memory yeah. you know what i mean so it's gonna want to tuck where it was on the body is, once or twice exactly what we did. um <clears throat> but but like wide format stencil printers, I just think are kind of extra and take up a lot of extra space. Oh, like be huge there are the... such good like stencil printers right now. Like how you would have to be your career based on super large scale work mm -hmm. to to that kind of cost. I'm sure is. Insane. I mean, and then when we start talking about super large work, that's where I'd rather draw a lot of those things on. Like right. if you can get the stencil on a body panel mm -hmm. or the next body panel, and then draw through the My joints. My favorite tattoos are drawn on because it's like you had that time with the artist to create that art with them, and that that it's for me it's for only me no one i saw agree i mean i agree with that no so much the stencil 75 percent no one's seen i'm 75 yeah. percent on that side the only other side i had i i'm only the reason i'm seven only 75 percent is some of it i just can't draw well i just can't draw on there like a big geometric piece yeah. with all that like you know little intricates no, no argument with but that. man i always try to like get some aspect of like where i could get some freehand in there you know mm -hmm. like if i have that on there like doing something to just like draw some lines break something up in a way I, do I something where i can it involve a sharpie so. <laughs> so my friend fraser you met fraser yeah. i don't think you met fraser yet he has some of the best and this is one of the reasons i respect him so much as a tattooer he has some of the best hand drawn mandalas that I've ever seen. Like some of the mandalas that he makes with just a pen on a shoulder cap are better than anything I could have made and printed off flat and laid on that same body part. And to look at it, they look symmetrical and they look like, it's like, oh, you really had to tweak that to make it fit with the anatomy, but it looks perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, it takes a it takes a different kind of mind to plan it's that like far ahead. In a car, 
it's got yeah. curves. What's yeah. flat doesn't work. What's with on curves? But then the line quality is great every time. Like it would just. You wizard, you. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. When like it's so good and it looks so effortless that it's like oh, it's like I'm when you frustrated play, when I right. look at it yeah. because I wish I could do it that effortlessly. It's like when you play guitar and you see somebody playing guitar and you don't <laughs> understand how they're making. Yeah, like my fingers don't even move like that. that. Out of the instrument, and you're just like you trickster. That, that is that's my same guitar but how is it making that noise when you hold it it doesn't make that noise for me but what i was getting at was you were talking about how like hand drawing the intricate parts it's one of, it's one yeah. of the reasons i respect, respect fraser so much because he can do that because it is so incredibly challenging and time consuming and when you've got the patience just to do 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 and there it is and it's good and you're confident and you go with it and it looks great every time yeah, not that's easy. All, it's yeah, not it's easy. not easy. Yeah, it's it's all, not easy I love all. that. I love when I see just a really simple, like, really simple Sharpie drawing, and then it ends up just being the most, like, just fucking deadly dark bio piece, and it really just started like a green and purple line you know wasn't mm -hmm. even shaded sharp you know sharpie yeah. like shaded or anything like like nathan even like nathan when he works he does a lot of that like where i'm like oh i probably would have gotten to the sharpie a lot more but he's like he got nathan his he got nathan his... who nathan marty we have him coming up on an episode soon yep I love that two weeks from now yeah he's so chill <laughs> two weeks. I, I will you know one of the things that's always tickled me about nathan is that he is so like his artwork is so like dark and macabre and like and on the verge of evil, but he is just so chill life. and like just he's either like serious and concentrating when you see him or he's nothing but smiles. Like yeah. he's always just, yeah, no, I got yeah. a, 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 a lo amazing I, I love guitar it. player. I don't, I don't most people know that name. He's yeah, I've never actually heard him play. I know he plays, but I haven't he's heard him play. Shreds. Don't let him tell yeah. you otherwise because like, does he shred guitar? Shreds. nice if anyone doesn't just to show off some nathan marty work of course jordan wants to take oh, his clothes off wow only because it takes it takes up so much Black of the screen out nippies. todd you just did some Ray, traveling recently it in there who did that nathan marty that's pretty dope sorry guys the audio for me is Really crap. I'm sorry, man. Is it? I wonder, I wonder if it's, if it's really connection. Or... You sound like you. I I can't figure it out. What's it sound like? Like you're talking digitally. Mm. <laughs> you sound like a Dalek. I hope. I hope. I hope we don't sound like that everywhere. Well, I think Sandy would have said something. <laughs> 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 So Todd, you just got back from Let me, some traveling. I'm right? gonna, I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna try okay. restarting and see if all that right, works. All right, cool. Okay, cool. Perfect, Todd. Thank you. Talk to you in a minute. All right, we'll get Todd. I, he just got back from Vegas too. Yeah. Uh, you know what? This guy. <sighs> I don't know how Sandy many. says we're in the clear. I don't know yeah. how many. I don't know how many times I wake up to a message from Todd and it's just like a picture of some buds on a tray. It's like, He'll send me pictures of like whatever rosin he has, or I see you, sir. Mm -hmm. Answer with mm -hmm. what I'm smoking. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes use and then of like, okay, I'll have like whatever flavor of the week, and then he'll have like 15. And it's like, I get it, Todd. I get it. You have more tasty things than I do, I and you live in Ohio. Michigan. <laughs> uh, we were talking about the differences in the dispensaries and how things are a little bit different yeah. here than they are in Michigan. Yeah. It's really kind of it's backwards between market. the two. Much narrower. More restrictions, limitations. Fuckers. Yeah. Limit me. Yeah. 2.8. What? <laughs> and wait, I, 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 that's not enough. This, this is. <laughs> so you mean today? This is supposed to last that's me all for month. Right now. <laughs> all month. That's for right now. So Mother's Day, there, <laughs> there was a show that Gabe invited me to be a part of, and I was going to, but I ended up getting my hands full with nieces and Mother's Day shenanigans because I forgot it was Mother's Day when I told Gabe I would be on the show. Um, but I feel like we need to start being more involved with those things. <laughs> 
all the yeah, I do all agree. the like I don't know if it's not art what am I talking about weed I feel like I could run my mouth about weed just as much as I could run my mouth about tattoos mm-hmm. we're gonna do that next week no, you don't think <laughs> maybe almost maybe almost as much I was totally kidding oh okay <laughs> I thought I drenched it in sarcasm oh there I'm sorry I miss it. I'm no. high. I'm high. I might have missed the sarcasm. <laughs> um, I'm kind of a dork. So, I mean, I don't, the game's changed so much. Everything's different. I don't know. I don't know if I can keep up anymore. Thanks, universe. Yeah, I ain't mad at you. That's all we got to do. We yeah. just got to be like, thanks, universe. I'm just, just going to mm-hmm. tell you about what I'm enjoying. Yeah. What universe bestowed upon it's me this a, week. It's not a competition. It's a blessing. Absolutely. <laughs> Look Absolutely. how happy I am just to be happy. <laughs> Get in my play dope. Oh man. Ben, you did yeah. a little bit of traveling recently, but you were only on the road and didn't get to really yeah, enjoy I did, yourself. I did emergency traveling. Yeah. It was uh my mom called me because my <clears throat> dad was in the hospital and he drove himself to the hospital like the stubborn human being that he is. Um, left his job and drove himself to several different places. He went to the VA first and then to urgent care and then to the hospital. Um, But all said and done, they were in between moving states and his truck was loaded full of stuff to move back and forth from the states, like the the houses. Oh, I didn't realize it was loaded down also. Oh, that makes it complicated. They were mid-move and he drove himself to the hospital and ended up being there for a little longer than he wanted. So my mom called because he's persnippity about who drives his vehicles because it's an old vehicle with 180,000 miles on it doesn't trust anybody that couldn't make the trip if it needed to be you know (laughs) fixed on the way I guess I don't know so I ended up flying out the next morning at like 5 30 in the morning (laughs) Uh, my mom picked me up at the airport and we went straight to the hospital saw my dad for about half hour 45 minutes got right into his truck and drove it to South Carolina Pluto savannah georgia and then drove to south carolina and then literally went to bed because <laughs> i was exhausted got up the next morning and flew out at 6 30 i so bet you were really, so grumpy it wasn't really travel as much as uh you didn't get to see or do mm-hmm. any of the travel things I had two layovers in the maryland airport and that How place was, that? was pretty rad there was a little uh, breakfast joint inside the security area talk to me about the food ben it's fucking delicious. <laughs> they gave me these little biscuits that had cream cheese inside of them and then both sides of these biscuits was rolled in everything bagel seasoning okay everything bagel seasoning is like okay. the way to my heart it's everything okay. i love okay. it's salty it's garlicky it's delicious and then they gave you this on fucking point yeah. strawberry jam i got a yup <laughs> strawberry jam that had, was a jalapeno strawberry jam oh what and it was just like Ooh. everything i wanted in life so you're saying at that moment it the was highlight like, of your travel was the layover i fucking ate nine Maryland. dollar biscuits twice you know nice. what i mean like, <laughs> like oh, i'm back <laughs> let me go with some of biscuits <laughs> Nice. My second layover was much shorter, and I still like I was running to the plane with these biscuits in my like, hand. Like, nice, get it done. So I always look for the bright side. Nice. So does that make you want to or ready for more travel? I love traveling. If you told me there was a pig farm convention in Idaho and you needed somebody to go with you, I would be like, "What plane are we taking?" Let's pack bags. I love it. I don't care what we're doing, where we're going. Um, I'm just poor. So, <laughs> you know, like. I have a van. See, I love car trips because then I can take whatever supplies that I <laughs> need necessary for the trip. Todd, are you back? Yep. Do we sound yeah. better? Yeah, I switched okay. to my phone. I don't know why my computer was doing what I was doing. Oh, well, welcome. Well, yeah. Welcome. How, how were your recent travels? Oh, Vegas was a blast. Yeah, where'd you stay? Uh, Aria. Seth yeah. stayed at MGM from Hustle Butter. We were over there for quite a bit. Nice. Yeah, nice. Went out to eat. We went out to eat at the, I X, at the X spot. Uh, that was pretty amazing. Had Wagyu A5. Oh, shit. Nice. Yeah. 
balling. Mm-hmm. I like to eat, sir. <laughs> yeah, that was really good. Jay the Moon was there. Oh, nice. So yeah, we all had a good time. That's all, that's what's up. Fun. That's good to hear. Sounds delicious. <laughs> oh, it was. When did you get back? Friday. Friday. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just got back from Miami a couple of days ago. I got back from Zion and then just went right to Miami like three days later. And I was Jesus. out there. Yeah, out there for another three, four, like three days. So it was kind of a quick trip, but God, I did so much while we were there. Mm-hmm. Went up to the Everglades, did some like fan boat tours. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, we did. So we did fan boat tours. Um, That's did fun. some like went to like miami club i'm not super clubby but it was fun it was definitely fun it's it, what was really crazy is watching how crazy florida is right, right. now dude florida don't give no fucks at all <laughs> they're no raw fu- dog and everything no, right dude. now if, you're, <laughs> dude, if you are it's florida guys they've been doing it for years Can we just be if, honest? if you are uh if you are wearing a mask you're the only one wearing a mask Honestly, no matter how packed anything is and no matter where you go, unless you're in like a restaurant or like not even a restaurant, but like unless you're like in a fucking gas station or something right. like at, that's the only time people are wearing masks. Nobody when it's packed clubs or anything like that is caring at all. There's no thought towards it. What? When I'm like wearing a mask, I'm like, is this even doing anything <laughs> right so now? Funny. Like there's literally no point to this uh, right now. And everyone here accepts the fact that they're going to get COVID. I don't give a fuck if I, I give them COVID the... right now. The funny if... thing is, is before COVID, Jordan wore a ninja mask all the time anyways. I was, I've always wore a mask just because I don't want to fucking get my germs on people. I don't want to breathe on people and I don't want them breathing in my mouth or having their anything <laughs> spittle into my face. I want none of your spittle, sir. <laughs> Vegas, Vegas wasn't like that. Vegas was still pretty much. I mean, yeah. it's opened up a lot. It's eighty percent now. Some when hotels we were in Vegas, are at hundred. like that. Uh, some of them are at a hundred now because they've their employees are above eighty five percent vaccinated, so they get to open their casino first to a hundred percent. Yeah, but masks were in masks were definitely the call of the order out there still. You couldn't go anywhere without a mask. <laughs> Oh, yeah, when I when we were in Vegas, it was the exact same. My favorite thing on the plane was when they were like, "If you take your mask off, there will be a federal police officer waiting for you." We will fucking. <laughs> what airline was that? Your we are going to launch you out the rude. air lock. I was like, this guy, this guy is serious. I was like, I was Launched like, out the airlock, Jordan. You got so graphic with it. <laughs> like step by step. We will place you in front of said airlock. Right. We will make sure you get an exit row seat. <laughs> see, 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 I'm vaccinated now, so it's like I did, I really don't even want to wear a mask. My ears hurt right. from wearing them all that time when I was out there. Yeah. yeah. I got all sore and everything. I feel sorry for people that have to wear it all day. Yeah, it sucks. I'm over it. It does. I'm, I'm ready to not wear a mask anymore. Uh, we're supposed to be mask free in a couple months. I don't remember the date. Yeah, by July, supposedly. July. I'm about to get my vaccine and not give a fuck. Yeah, okay, I gotta get mine soon. That's how I was. I got mine. I'm done. I was out there. I was like, why? I don't even care. I mean, I'm I don't want to have to deal with it traveling and stuff. Like the last time, my last, when we went to Miami, I did, you know, we had this whole little scare thing and ended up getting tested and being uh, negative, but it was just fucking, it was such a stress. And I'm like, man, I'm done. I'm done with that. I'm just going to get vaccinated. It's just no, weird. Not every time that you get sick, you're like, <sighs> Man. You can't get sick because that was what happened oh, to me. I actually got like some weird, I just like allergies or something for like a day. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, do I got fucking COVID? My like a day before I'm supposed to leave for, you know, my right. trip. My family had a stomach bug thing and everybody had it for a couple of days. I had it for more than a couple of days. But and we knew it was a stomach thing and everybody's like, oh, you better go get tested. You better get tested. I'm like, I will just because you begging. But like, it's a stomach problem. And then I never mind. <laughs> <laughs> but could you taste? Yeah, I feel like yeah. There you go. People, like as soon as you lost your sense of taste, you would be like, "Oh no!" I mean, like, where some people well, that I think would be might me. ignore that symptom and be like, mm, "Yeah, I just close my nose." I feel like there's, there's a lot of no taste, no no yeah. taste kind of people out there in general. <laughs> <laughs> your life is so. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't know taste if it fucking hit you and the fucking shot you in the head. I got a buddy like that, man. I mean, he's just meat and potatoes. That's it. He has, 
nothing else, man. There's nothing. I mean, we were out in Vegas like in 2006, and it was bitchy because we went to a buffet and he couldn't get his fucking steak and eggs. <laughs> That's so I mean, funny. The fuck, man. I keep you know? <clears throat> so my clients yesterday, man. Uh, oh, I was fun. like, time to order some food, and uh, the husband and wife came together, even though like we're supposed to only have one, but what have you. <clears throat> no one has to. Die. So, anyways, I'm like, okay, so when it comes to food, Columbus has a lot of really good food options. Like, I think we're really lucky in this city for the variety that we have and the quality that we have, and Red Tree is close enough to campus and downtown that all of that is close enough to uber eats so usually when i look at a client and it's like i want to try somewhere new that i've never eaten from before what do you like usually my client knows that i'm a foodie and they get excited and they're like oh well i've heard of a such and such and we try something new and exotic and different you know let me let me say my you client know, yesterday you had was a husband like, and wife and expected an agreement on where to eat my client yesterday was like i only like like meat I don't like vegetables. And then the my client, wow. the lady, she was like, yeah, he'll only eat like if it's just like meat and cheese. I was like, no, like potato or vegetable or anything. And she was like, no. And I was like, okay. Your colon must be a wreck. Yeah, so, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Long that story is, short. That is colon cancer. I did no find rubbish. a new little barbecue place. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's new, but it's new to me, and it was really pretty good. Brisket, ribs, barbecue. Yeah, look, if you yeah. like me and you're not happy with though, brisket, then if my client said some shit like that, I'd be like, all right, we eat all meat. <laughs> Go with that. No. I mean, I got I we got myself some tonight. greens, and they were delicious. The collards were really good. They were just the right amount of spicy, and it was like definitely yesterday's yeah. pork that had been extra marinating, and all the fat kid candy had dissolved into this delicious spicy soupy goodness. Pork. I think that's going to be the next name of my band. <laughs> yesterday's pork. I meant it in the best way. I know. I meant I it in the it. very I best way. The way. You meant it because I was like, yes. yeah. Barbecue's always better the next day. But I mean, what a perfect answer to a to a, a, a oddly answered question. Yeah. I only ate me. I Fon, only ate Fon me. instantly switches into artist mode and goes, "How do I make this a good thing? How is Barbecue. this going to be something I, I enjoy these keys? also?" How can I reach these keys? <laughs> barbecue what a perfect answer mm -hmm. you know what i want right now some barbecue <laughs> thank you Fon. thank you i do I want mean, barbecue hey i'm making pulled pork tomorrow so Ooh. oh mm. yeah, some. yeah right catapult uh, it over tis my fave tis my fave so todd have you been to any tattoo events yet now that um conventions and stuff are starting to happen again not yet so this i Monday. was looking at golden state Okay. Um, so, this weekend, uh, Villain Arts has a convention going on in Cincinnati, and I think we're going to make a roadie together Sunday. Yep. So we're going to hop over there and kind of like maybe talk to the crowd, take our fancy cameras, um, get some footage and see, see, <clears throat> what the, see what the buzz is like on a floor. I haven't talked to anybody that's been to a show yet. Uh, I generally don't. Hey, have you? Fun, you tried these yet? Yeah, it's gonna be what interesting. I haven't been to one in a while, been a year. They're not bad. Um, I really like the uh, uh, Kingpin and um, Juicy Hemp Toasted Hemp Wraps Ooh. the best. Um, I feel like uh, I feel like the Twisted like there's something about the glue that I taste that I don't. I, I Where's the just, fucking glue, man? I ain't found where the glue is yet on these damn Well, I, I feel like it's like the glue that holds the paper together, like that glue. Oh. It doesn't have like a gum line on it, but like I feel like you taste that where I like the. You have to remember, color. I've never rolled a blunt before in my life until I bought <laughs> these damn things. So I mean, and while I'm saying these uppity things, I'm sitting here rolling up a swisher. Um, I would prefer to smoke toasted hemp that is nicotine free because I've never been a cigarette smoker. But I can pick up Swishers anywhere, and I don't have to order them. <laughs> Do you, you use Swishers because it's backwoods over here. Mm, backwoods yeah, over here. J. Uh. over here. He's on the backwood kick. He's 
about it, about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we already we up in here. Already, already know. Yeah, everyone's freaking. It's all but black. I'm all, I'm all I'm all out of weed right now, though. To be honest. Now that's a bad situation to yeah, be well, in. I'm gonna have a couple ounces here though in like a day or two. We got it covered. He's got it covered. <laughs> oh, he's, he's got, got plenty of dabs. Yeah, I got never like, really out. No, no. I just want to roll one of these backwards up and I don't have any weed. Um, there's plenty on this tray over here. I will I will roll one up, Fawn. I mean if you wanna if you wanna roll up a backwoods. Fawn, it would be my honor. It would be your honor. It would. Look at that. What a jar. What a jar. Yeah, it's cool. Show fun. Show, do that again. Show fun. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, I've seen this. It it's got a... Right here on the top. It, yeah, my top. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this shit. I, I like those. That's a, that's a, is that just your jar or was that the packaging for that weed? No, that was just the jar I got. Uh, okay. Seth gave it to me. It's pretty cool. It's from Smokus. Is it uh, I sealing dig, I can as well, down. like airtight, so it doesn't yep. stink? Yeah, it's those airtight. Things are those things are rad. They are. Ben, have you and Todd met in real life? I Do you guys know one so, another? But uh, it's in, been in passing at uh, Hell City, I believe. So I don't think probably we've ever hung out. But you would definitely I, I'd recognize, recognize your Todd face for with sure. His off. I'd recognize him with his clothes <laughs> off. Um, I, I I honestly believe that's the truest statement I have ever heard, Fawn. That's actually really weird because as soon as you said that, I re- now remember the bodysuit pictures. Yeah, <laughs> and that's awkward. Yeah, not awkward, but. That's a weird way to put it and instantly trigger that. In, in that tattoo thought. community, like, man, it like, it's weird. Whoa, it's yeah, weird. I, you're you're actually right. You should have seen some of the shitty tattoos I seen out in Vegas in the wild. <laughs> talk, talk to That's us my about That's my favorite them, part Todd. about me. Oh my god, I took pictures of them. Here. No, it was the That's same. Why when, cat- I'm, the- I'm gonna be completely honest. Oh, it was I can't the same do it. When me and Emily were out there, like literally, we uh, or uh, when Durb and I were out there, we it's the cover. Both. Cap- I was out there with her two months before that. The world. Vegas. You go to Vegas to get a cover up. I feel like that's like the biggest thing out there. Is cover up, cover up, cover hmm. up. Well, I don't know the whole show is based well, about shitty tattoos. Well, it's Robert Foley. It's, yeah. it's true. Yeah. It's true. I'm trying I, to I think of a place I don't know if that I could work. I, could they were so I don't know if I could tattoo bad. in Vegas unless it was at Rubber <laughs> They were so bad. Anywhere there's I mean, this one, I, got, I took a picture and I sent it to the guys and I go, what's this? <laughs> I mean, seriously. We don't what realize the- how spoiled we are being in a good art community. Because mm-hmm. it's like you, you travel outside of our little niche and it's like, oh, wait, that's right. I forget. You guys don't, you guys don't see this. I actually, don't want you doing right. it. Yeah, you guys don't see this stuff. My, my bad. I think it's funny. Yeah, I was I was driving downtown, heading up downtown uh, in Vegas, and uh, I'm at Charleston in Maine, and there's these girls to the left of me, and the girl goes, "Wow, I love your arm." I go, "Thanks," and then she's seen. I go, "What I usually say?" Well, I said, "You should see the rest of me," (laughs) (laughs) and then she's seen my hands. She goes, wow. So I put them together because, you know, that's what they are. They're a piece together. Nice. And um, she goes, oh, my God, that's amazing. And then they were smoking weed. And I go, hey, pass that over. <laughs> <laughs> Great to meet you. Let me hit that. Those are my favorite kind of people to meet. That's about Vegas, man. I mean, it's everyone's you smell weed everywhere anymore. I haven't been Vegas. since right. it's opened up. So like, I, 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 I'm excited for the new experience. Because oh, last is. time I went, I couldn't find weed everywhere. And I was quite upset. I was like, wait. This Jordan, is- you got to get Derb to stop going to the reef, though. Oh, my God, dude. Fuck that place. I will never go back. It was the dude, worst. it's horrible, it, man. It was the worst experience ever, and I couldn't believe how much he wanted to go there. And I was like, seriously, Derb, you want to go to the place that has a line that's going to take us two hours to get there? He was all about it, so we were all about it. So I, like, I was like, all right, enough. that's cool. It was the first place you go to. We're going we're gonna to go to that, but we, we waited in line like two hours to get in there. You're going to wait 20 minutes at Planet 13 unless you got oh, your man. medical card and you go right to the front of the yard line. Oh yeah, I it wasn't. It wasn't, that it wasn't Derb's fault. He was just really enthusiastic about it. He liked that place a lot, but it just ended up being a huge, huge wait. And then we got up there, and they actually got like half of my weed order wrong. And oh, uh, and the weed's not that good anymore. And then I'm not about like to sit in line again. 
I was just happy to have weed. I wanted to get the hell out of there. We waited in line for two hours. <laughs> two. Trust wow, you. that's two just two fucking hours. horrible. <laughs> I mean, at least you were in good company. So you guys were just chilling and chalking it up, right? Yeah. <laughs> and Brian was being such a good sport. He doesn't smoke. So he was just sitting there with us <laughs> waiting. <laughs> Brian is always such a good sport. Like, ding -ding. <laughs> so funny absolutely we 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 yeah i was talking to the ubers and i go so what's the first stop you usually get now out of the airport and he goes planet 13 nice. nice i went seriously he goes yeah he goes 90 percent of them are hitting that and i go well that's good to hear oh there's so many out there though i mean i couldn't believe how many are out there now Oh, for sure. Hundreds. And Cookies is opening one up across from World Resorts. It's actually opening up this week or probably already open. So they'll be out there. And going out at the end of June, I guess there is a pizza show. Pizza show? Pizza show a that we're going to. And I guess the last like two days show? of it. Yeah, like a pizza food show. I love food shows. Um, and the last two <laughs> days is all weed themed stuff. So a weed themed pizza yeah. show? Yeah. So when, come down from heaven and create me a what's, what's the date? I think fine. so, Ben. Uh let me let me let me double check that. I can't remember off the top of my head. That was my favorite part about being a chef <laughs> was getting to go to all the food shows. They got a new ca casino getting <laughs> yeah. ready to open up. World Resort. It's huge. You should you you know what? check it out. I <laughs> would not be surprised if that was part of the motivation for this trip as well. Uh, but it's going to be from the 23rd <laughs> through the 1st. Yep. It'll be open. It opens the 24th. Yep, I bet we're going out there for the opening of it as well as the food show. My buddy that I'm going with, Clayton, he's one of those like, <laughs> let's kill like six birds with one stone kind of people. So they got an Asian street food uh, place at that World Resorts. I know you're a foodie, so you might want to check that out. Absolutely. Yeah, the friend I'm going out with, he's got one business that is a, uh, it's called Tackett Southern Barbecue in Marion, and it has the best brisket that I've ever had. I would put it up against any brisket I've had anywhere. They're so, so good. And like, I know all of his ingredients and there's no secrets to it. It's just simple, basic, it's take the time to do right. it right. I know, yep. I know what wood he uses. That <laughs> might be one of the secrets as I know the combination of wood that he uses to smoke things, but but like other than that, it's just like. Why have all of our conversations came back to barbecue? I don't. Know. I don't know. Because we need to have more can, barbecue. Can we just because we're hungry. It's summer. Like, but yeah, the same right friend also has a one of the um, older bars in Marion, which has always been known for its pizza. So um, he's got the barbecue joint and the pizza joint, and he has to have like the so, most bougie and best of everything. Oh, Does Todd, he have the Todd, best Todd's Todd's showing pizza. us the good stuff. Yeah. This is what, called Great Pie. Oh, is it good? Look, this is these are good, pictures great, I wake up to great from pie. this guy. Who whose Great Pie is it? <laughs> whose Great Pie uh, is it? Who made it? Uh, someone out in Vegas. I don't oh, remember yeah. the name of the company. Okay. That little doodad's pretty handy. It's like eating. my little Randy's. Wow. You look like a dab mosquito. <laughs> 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 Like a dab butterfly. I haven't gotten to the electronic nectar collectors yet. I haven't bridged the Yeah, gap. that's what it is. It's a it's a honey badger, it's called. A honey badger. Honey nice. badger don't give a fuck. I bet that gets hot and stays hot longer than my Randy's. My Randy's like I can go two or three days without charging it, but then I gotta let it. I gotta I gotta actually charge the thing. I think that would last me a while. I get about a week out of my battery. Nice. It's a Pretty big battery, though. It's hefty. <clears throat> this thing's Chris. awesome. I've had this two years now. Nice. Jeez. And trust me, anything weed related the last, the last two, two years, years. Is fucking amazing. <laughs> You're, killing it. You're killing it. That was my biggest complaint about dropping hundred bucks on portable wax atomizers and stuff like Honestly, that. Honestly, any portable yeah. wax, anything usually they, doesn't they, last over a year. Man, you'd get two, three weeks out of them, and the atomizer would go out. Like, okay, cool, disposable part, and then the whole thing snaps in half, and you're like, okay, another hundred and thirty dollars. Here you go. Like, it was, mm -hmm. it was. Draining. I've dropped it. I, you know, this thing's just amazing. I, I Pony Larson uh, turned me onto it. I would definitely get another <laughs> one. 
<laughs> they got bubblers too. You couldn't attach to it. <laughs> you want to get fancy? We can get fancy. You can. I wonder if my ooze bubblers and stuff would fit on there. I've got a bunch of the little like double and triple bubblers that ooze came out with. So I'd have like my, and you know me, Ben, I, I'll have my pen, yeah, but then I'll have like this heady bougie, like worked thing on it. Like, Oh, I see oh, you vape. I see you vape. Hmm. <laughs> and I'd be like, it'd it be awesome. like chirping and tweeting and percolating <laughs> as I'm like blowing big clouds of tasty <clears throat> goodness. I just light it on fire, man. <laughs> However that happens. That it's day. the funny thing. As much as I love my all of my glass art, this is why I've um, like switched to collecting vessels rather than um, more like bongs and rigs. Um, but like I spend so much money and I love them that like that I treasure them just as much as I would a painting hanging on the wall. But like at the end of the day, I still smoke. <laughs> a blunt, <laughs> like a blunt is still my preferred way to smoke yeah. <laughs> Jordan it's called green life what does that say it's green life that's the okay. name of the got of that planet 13 alright alright then right out mine's called play dope I got it on corner 13 <laughs> Mine's called smoking fat logs. <laughs> oh my god, you're about to kill me! Let me breathe. Half a I'm, we're still smoking a blunt. It, it ain't going yet. It ain't oh, going yet. Uh, <laughs> I like, I like to get high. No, no. Well, prepare yourself. <clears throat> we have ourselves a minute between. Get that lung ready. Yeah, it's not. and then get the other one ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're on an upward spiral of weed smoking here. We smoke a lot. Jordan, we, we haven't shows. gotten to hang out. <laughs> I, it's I, been a while. I, I know. It's been like weeks. I missed you. Fine. Yeah, we go from seeing each other like all day, every day, multiple times a day it's to a like. Radio silence. <laughs> it's Where's crazy how people get intertwined in your life and you don't realize it. And then it's like, oh my God. What? Why yeah, it'd be I like, from you? It's and I have I have had coffee alone a lot lately. Oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jordan's not there. Coffee alone a lot. I know. I felt bad. I was gone. I was like, I kind of miss fun. Never feel bad about having a vacation. <clears throat> I know. Jordan, Jordan and yeah, I lived it was very time. close it was, to each I, other. It was my it was my time. We had good time out there. We had, you know, it was that hike looked me, amazing. At the same time, I'm like, I miss my yeah. homies. I wanna, you know, I can't wait to come back home. Still, you know. Yeah. Did you miss your dog? Yeah, I definitely missed Ian and Drazi. I had to take Drazi to the vet yesterday. Found out he's got what, cat Amelia? AIDS. He's got cat AIDS. He's got cat AIDS. He's got FIV. And Ooh. he got attacked by another cat, and that's probably how he got it. And he's got he like fucked up his eye. So producer number one or producer number two has uh he's down he's down and out for a minute. His legs super swollen, he's limping. He's gonna recover. He got his antibiotic what? shots, he got vaccines, he, he got all his shit. You want out? Like, yeah, shit's hard out in the streets for this cat. Yeah, so he's bad. never going outside again, is what Vet says I should do. And I, every time I look at him and he looks at me, I say, you're never going outside again. <laughs> you're never doing it. Poor, Poor little dude, but he don't need to be out here. Someone's just going to shoot him one day or yeah, something. I have an outside cat as well. And every now and then I'm like, I wish you weren't a shit. But who wants out, girls? Because yeah. when shit like this happens, like, I'm like, God damn it. Like, I don't want to have to worry about that. I, I do. <coughs> I do. So I'll just have to create some sort of system where I can put him on, like, a leash out back with Eon. <laughs> Little baby kitty leash. He's got, his, he's got his harness, and he oh. loves his harness. He feels, like, more secure when he's got it on. He just becomes, like, a lazy cat when he's got it. He just doesn't <laughs> do active shit. He just kind of waddles around. I will so let funny. you leash me, but I will not be led. <laughs> <laughs> so. I feel like Gray would be so mad if I put... She won't even wear a collar. She yeah. won't have it. Like she will like rub herself and do everything to try and get it that's off. How, that's how is now. Um, so I feel like if I put a harness on her, she would be offended. She would be like, <laughs> you know, I don't like this. I and that's the look she would give me the whole time. The like, <laughs> you know, I don't like this. <laughs> you know, I don't like this. That's so funny. I you know I don't like this. I can't say that. That's my colleague, though. She hates the harness. She thinks yeah. she's in trouble when she got one on, and it's like, you got to have it on. We're going somewhere. Man, it is gorgeous <laughs> there. 
Yeah, look yes, at that. You're it in such a beautiful place. Lighting does so much. You look good, Todd. I like, I like Thank you. I think, it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's shaping up to be a pretty nice day here. I should probably be at work. I wish we were outside. It's like six, <laughs> six, 63 here today, so it's not that great. That's perfect. <laughs> that sounds delicious. It's a great time. <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been chilly. It's about what it is here. I that's think right that's now. be outside and do things and not sweat. Well, I left ninety eight degree weather, so you know it's a bit yeah. different when you come to that and it's forty three. Yeah, no <laughs> Jesus kidding. Jesus Christ! The yeah. same thing that just happened to me, except it was like a hundred with like ninety degree or ninety <laughs> percent humidity. It was like walking. Oh, into, that's horrible! It was that's like breathing. walking into a sauna outside. It like made me feel sick. We call that breathing mayonnaise. <gasps> breathing mayonnaise. Oh, for real though. Yeah. For real. I'm like looking at people working out in the roads and like doing things outside. I'm like, how do people exist in Florida? How do you live? I will never move to Florida. Me and Emily. See, in Vegas, like, they do it never at night. In Florida. Well, Vegas, it's at least dry. Vegas, they do a lot of that stuff at night. Work on the yeah. roads and that. I don't want to be one of those people like, well, it's dry heat. Because 100 is 100. I don't give a shit where you are. But like that layer of 90% humidity is just That's this worse. blanket oh. of <clears throat> right. death. You know what's I, funny? Uh, I mean, it may 100 degree in that kind of humidity is 115. <laughs> 100 in like Vegas, it feels like 90. I remember hiking in uh, Phoenix and they're like, oh, it's only 116. I was like, did you just say only? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, only? It gets worse? Shit. Shit. <laughs> it was so yeah. hot that day. I have a hard time thinking. We got back in the hot. van and it said it was 120. Uh, that's that's the most temperature I've ever uh, that was, dealt with. That was a lot. So 118 has been mine. It was Vegas one time. Yeah, that's a lot, man. Damn. That's yeah. like melt, melt your trash can weather. That's a melt your Why? It's, weather. It was during the World Series. Like grandma's dying weather. <laughs> so, you, so your car's out in the Rest parking in peace, lot. So you got to walk inside in that ash pop. Yeah, <laughs> that heat by big time, man. It's like holy shit. I got burnt melting. just touching a car. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. It's like the walk from the uh, room in Vegas to the con or in uh, Hell City. Just the walk from the room to the convention center. You already need to change your shirt by the time you get there, because like <laughs> it's a, it's a what three five minute walk, and mm -hmm. you sweat through your clothing by the time you get to the other side of the. Right. It's a lot. It's well, a lot he's got to have a during monsoon season out there, so it's humid in Vegas. I mean, in scenic sense. Oh, I'll take it. That's fine. I'm oh, just, it's a lot of sweat. Not a humid. I hate the humidity. Oh, I don't like feeling sticky. I like I like Me feeling neither. dry. I'd rather feel dry. Yeah. Not the last Hell City Phoenix, but the one before. Just as we were getting into town, a monsoon hit, uh. and those roads were like instantly six inches deep Ooh. that was insane Where Phoenix? Yeah, yeah yeah it came in so quick and there was <laughs> hail i was like wow i yeah, was amazing, not prepared for this i mean fortunately i grew up driving in michigan so i feel like i'm a very confident <laughs> driver i Double hope shit. i hope i don't come across <laughs> as an arrogant driver but i'm a very confident driver like the conditions in michigan change drastically so quickly yeah. that you've got to be on your toes and you've you've got to be a good defensive driver when it comes to nature do you agree todd oh yeah especially when you, you agree hit that jordan black ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you just got to be on your toes. Yeah. So I I'm, feel I'm, like that's, that's how I drive is super defensively. I feel like there are very few like road to, but... conditions that are intimidating. But when it's like, whoa, this might be like, I hope I've got clearance. That's where I'm like worrying about the mechanics of my vehicle. Like, I hope I'm not sucking water in. I hope like it came up so <laughs> quick. It just couldn't even gas. wash <laughs> off the roads. It was nuts. Yeah, but if you could drive L.A. traffic and drive New York traffic. You can drive anywhere. Uh, that's how I feel. My time in LA, at, honestly, after that, I I literally told myself so many times. I'm like, Psh, if I if I can do this, I literally can drive anywhere. And I spent like <laughs> two weeks solidly driving in LA, uh, and it fucked me up. My wife and I. Drove. But it made me it made me like such a more alert driver and like <laughs> forced to be super it offensive. Like you have to you have to fucking. Seize the fucking gap. Seize the fucking gap. Go. <laughs> you do. Drove, Go. We yeah. drove to the uh, Empire Tattoo Convention in uh, New York, 
and I had never driven in Manhattan, let alone, you know what I mean? Like, and we're pulling up. And the first thing I did was almost murder somebody because he just walked across the street. And like, I, you know, I thought I had the right of way. Oh, nope, nope, nope. He'll jump right out and fr- flicks me off. Yeah. I, I literally, I was inches from him squealing tires. almost hit him. We've been in town for like three minutes. It was, it was ridiculous. I parked the car and I was like, Mm-mm, I don't even give a fuck how much cabs are. Call that motherfucker. I'm not driving this shit again. I'm not doing it. Nope, nope, nope. My, one of my, I used to, I used to say it was my least favorite place to drive was Atlanta. But like now that I've been there so much, it's not a big deal. You just got to leave yourself a buffer of time. That's it. Um, uh, but- Atlanta's easy to drive through. Yeah, yeah, I, and maybe maybe it's that I'm older now and road rage isn't as much of an issue, and I've been, I'm never in a hurry. Philly, you ever driven downtown Philly? No, not Everything's yet. Everything's one direction. Yeah, this goddamn big. It is Philly. Philly is the worst traffic I've ever been in my life. I've, I've driven in LA. I've driven in. New York. I haven't driven in Philly. Philadelphia but was ridiculous. Narrow streets, passenger. Yeah, it was, and, and, and it was just it was like expected. Boston, same wait. way. <laughs> A half hour to go three miles. It was. It well, was I guess you're dog. right because for the convention that we uh, we U hauled through fucking Philly, we're like big giant cargo, you know, big cargo van yeah. through Just Philly. Holding your breath, like, like Derb, <laughs> Tony, and I, and D- Brian. You know, Derb already ripped the top off the <laughs> rental truck once, right? Oh that yeah, I remember that. That was the funniest I've ever heard. When so they told me that, and they showed me the video of it and everything. Oh my god! I had just, oh my god, just left. We, we, they had just emptied that. I had been following that truck on my motorcycle all day. I'd literally spit off, split off of them right before that happened, and it was like, I am so glad I wasn't catching. <laughs> the top of a U-Haul right oh, behind man. Like, I've literally been Derp, following them there's... all day. We made two, three trips to the convention center that day. Todd, you know what happened. Do you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. He, he went to go under a bridge and didn't have the clearance and, and didn't have clearance. But that's what insurance is for. That's why you always pay that nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, but buy that insurance, people. So just to be clear to everybody, what happened? Uh he tried to go under a bridge and the truck was larger than the bridge <laughs> and he you ripped turned the it into off. a convertible the, yeah. the moving truck <clears throat> turned into a convertible um, there's, oh a, there's a few famous overpasses oh like that God. around the I columbus area that are everyone just everyone was okay detroit's got a few of those too you see uh, the truck stuck in them all the time detroit's sneaky with him too you'll just turn the corner and they'll be like ha, did he gotcha. hit, did he hit it just going like 40 50 yeah uh, i'm no i, I yeah. don't think it was that fast but it was, yeah, no, I don't it was think it would go that was the road like just expecting to go road. just expecting to go through i mean how would you not know it's okay so most of the time when you rent a truck they meet it all, tells you the height clearance well normally they meet all the bridge requirements there's not a lot of places in columbus that are like that i don't know if he picked the one magic spot or he had a, a taller truck than what we had normally mm-hmm. used i don't know what the circumstance was but whew, that, how nerve-wracking oh i'd feel i just could you imagine doing that when it was loaded full of gear I was in just a little fender bender yeah. and I felt oh, so man. stupid. Okay, that I was, was not just a so little fender bender fond. I, that's what I'm saying. I can it only was, imagine. It was not a little fender bender. <laughs> you did not get tapped. You got fucking T bones. Oh the no road. no no no! I meant and when I I mm. bumped into a girl in the van. Oh, yeah. the, this is the one that I'm talking about. I thought you meant the accident. No no no! <laughs> when I got T boned, <laughs> I was fender bender. I was, I was <laughs> minding my own business on my way home from my buddy Ben's house, <laughs> and on the one thing year. led to another crunch getting cracked on new year's eve yep. yeah so was, that we, was, we that was this, the end of 2020 we got to sit in the car and listen to the hail of bullets that rained from the sky and we rained Ohio. in the new year together in ben it's the, just now occurring to me good i was like good year. Sh- shut the cover on the sunroof <laughs> <laughs> she was like why i was like do you hear that <laughs> it's Fallujah outside shut the Shut the windows. <laughs> if, if, if the glass breaks, I want the little screeny thing to do its job and catch it so I don't get cut in the face. I think I was, uh, that was, that was a very interesting way to ring in the new year. Yeah. Very interesting. We way. dealt with the fire department first and then we had to wait like two. The police were literally like, we're not going to be there for a long time. They, they apologized like 32 times when, when they got there and we're like, guys, we're good. It's fine. We just, <laughs> 
let's get this done. Let's yeah. You know, I'm really thankful that like it was so like cut and dry and clear and like the license plate was left behind. <laughs> that way, like I didn't get like searched so or here's the nitty gritty. I was minding my own business, getting tea buttoned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way home. And here I am waiting on you. Who's the criminal? Not me. Thank you. <clears throat> oh man. Crazy. It's yeah. crazy surreal when that stuff just happens out of nowhere too, because it's like it, it, like when it happens it's like this is a dream and then you like look around a second time oh, and it's like man. oh no this is real life i wasn't just i'm not oh. just oh. i know every day i just this hope when i'm driving i'm like i'm so i'm such a careful driver since i've been here in columbus honestly i hate the drivers here i really do and everywhere i go i'm still like okay columbus is definitely this they are on their own a little bit like on a lot of drivers here it's just i don't know if it's just like this south south side of fucking columbus or what but literally like i keep so much distance from everybody because it seems like two out of three cars in front of me are drunk or like literally fucked up they're either on heroin or they're fucking fucked up dude literally I've, (laughs) i've had people smash into cars from one side to the other okay. in front of me okay. all of a sudden just like go into the bike lane go in front of some cars about i'm like oh my god i'm about to witness an accident and smash into a fucking car I, and then they whip out really fast i literally the same road we take every day fawn mm-hmm. to go to work same place fawn got hit there it is literally the worst i like it because it's the most convenient for me but it's two thirds of the drivers there. There's no license plate. They're acting shady as fuck doing yep. something. They're yep. in a, a place. There's no room for another car to get around yep. cars on this side part cars on this side parked, And then all of a sudden they decide to go from 20 to 60 and just zoom around everybody and go super fast through a ton of people. There's no space, just kind of busting through into the bike lane, phantom lane. Her car yesterday directly in front of me. I'll be right back to slam on my brakes. Cool. Okay, so. Um, he picked up her phone, swerved across the lane. Oh, the dogs, I gotta get them the in. Right. Come on, girls, let's go in. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Smacked the wall, launched her car in the air. It then dropped down, crossed traffic in front of me again, and smacked the other wall on this side. And I watched it all happen. So so fast. I literally watched her pick up her phone and I'm like, this is a little S curve. It's the new like ramp to get to 161 from 270. Mm-hmm. It's it right in the middle under the bridge. And I, I literally I watched her pick up her phone and I, I let off the gas and she boom, her car was in the air. Lands in the other lane, like smacks the other wall. Her whole car was pinned up against the wall. So I stopped. And I put my car next, like next to the line. I was in my big work truck and turned on my my hazard lights. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that honked. Like, I'm sorry, you had to slow down for an accident. Like, it was re- like I, I was almost offended. This lady was not in good shape. Um, obviously, called the squad, had to explain that we're in this really weird, funky patch of not in really 270, but 270. Like, it was, mm-hmm. it was a weird right. conversation now. Um, and it was a lot. Like it was, it was a rough way to start the day. I, I waited. I waited for the squad to get get there and just left after that. Cause like, you guys got this. Your pros. I'm going to work before this road gets congested. <laughs> so there's always there's two kinds of traffic. There is traffic that is very slow, where it drops down to like 35 miles per hour, and it's just like slow and tedious to get through. And usually it's 70, and you get through it quick, and it's just slow, and you just kind of be patient through it that's construction construction traffic is irritating yeah, yeah. okay but when you are on an interstate and it comes to a halt instantly usually so usually it just puts such a knot in my stomach it's just always like oh i hope they're okay yep. like before i even know what's up it's just like oh because when traffic stops right now that means there's so trouble there's, ahead there's this really weird study that i've i've read several times to make my mind not go crazy and it talks about how if everybody actually didn't tailgate and actually kept the correct amount of space between cars that you need mm-hmm. so there's that weird law they taught you in driver's ed it's 10 it's a car length for every 10 miles an hour mm-hmm. or whatever i think it's a little drastic when you get into the 70 80 mile an hour range don't get me wrong but if everybody kept that concept and there was actual space for people to move and maneuver there would never be traffic you know what i hate is when i'm starting <laughs> right. to get in like a congested <laughs> oh, yeah. area and Never. i have 
I'm kind of a claustrophobic driver. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I'm I an, an aggressive bubble. driver, but I like I, I like my space. Give me my bubble. So, but I like a space in front of me that you could fit comfortably two or three cars. Like I like that space. And when somebody thinks that's their spot, it's like, man. I just slow down more. Man. <laughs> That wasn't a window for you. That was my buffer. I guess you de- stay next to me. I guess it depends on the mood that I'm in, how offended I am that you're in my bubble. <laughs> no. Um, but most of the time, I just, especially riding, riding bikes and stuff, mm-hmm. you, you you yield to every, like, I don't care. I will slam on the brake, take the lane. I, don't, mm-hmm. I was just going to say, in a taller vehicle, I feel like I at least have the advantage that I can see up and over a lot right. of things. But on a motorcycle, you've got the opposite. Like, you've got to have blind faith that. Yeah there's not something crazy 10 cars ahead of you it's gonna it's usually why i know i don't rush to get back on my bike personally i'm always comfortable when i don't but i love it so fucking much when i do i love riding my motorcycle but i also am like cool when i'm like not putting my life at risk because it's not me it's you know i can be super comfortable and all that you just you got to be so defensive because of other people when you're commuting on a motorcycle when you're doing day-to-day traffic when you're going in and out of the city and you're it's it's not as it's it's a vehicle when you're out on the country doing windy swoopy roads enjoying the afternoon and 55 and breeze and stopping for ice cream that's a different kind of ride so to me a lot of that's the difference in 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 the enthusiast in my mind the guy that rides to work every day doesn't mind the traffic grind because he just for me i'm, I'm with mm-hmm. you when it's nice out and it's sunny and i can enjoy my time on the i don't want to work to ride it's it's a, it's a it's a right it's a release it's i definitely a- had my time well i spent like two years riding my bike at commuting with it i was like it's 10 minutes i was like 10 15 minutes from work i rode it every day did the yeah. traffic thing i was like i was cool with it because it wasn't that bad i didn't have to take any highways at the time i mean i'm tooling around the day and, but like at the same time it also like i feel like the more i'd ride my bike like that the more just like yes. random everyday yes. shit the more all of a sudden randomly the person yeah. behind me is not going to see me yeah. when i'm in front of somebody and they fucking come and crunch You're me exponentially uh increasing your chances don't of don't crunch me bro um <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying i don't like the day-to-day ride it's just the country rides where it's at I, I, the, oh it's just, no absolutely no I, oh yeah i was just yeah definitely i i'm totally with you on all that yeah like just just give me that's my favorite people out of my way and let me just soak in some sun to my face and I just have this rule that survival is of the utmost important as well in my I, book. I kind of agree with you. You I know like what surviving. one of my dreams Concrete is? Hurts. If you're in the Columbus area, there you're is, really. or like the central Ohio area, Thank there's a highway. Me. It's kind of like a byway called 315. <laughs> and it's really curvy and it sweeps and winds right along the river. But it's a lot of people's secondary route. Uh-huh. So it's pretty busy. And like, you can really only do like the speed limit or five miles over. You can't really fly unless so, it's the middle of the night, then you got to watch for deer and you can't really fly anyways. So you're talking about the stretch of 315 that is like the country road once it's yes. like three miles Yes, away, north there. of north of, yeah, it? Powell, Delaware. Delaware yeah. Yes. That, so one of my life fun, goals fun is to, I, you know what? I would do it on a bike. I would do it on a motorcycle. I would do it in any vehicle you gave me. Just shut that sucker down and let me fly Coast down yeah, it. Yeah, ah, yeah. I want to just drive that road so hard as fast as I could, yeah. just because I know it would be a blast. Even on a bicycle, even if I was just on a road bike, aero bars, just flying yeah. through and over those hills with the, like the way the trees wrap mm-hmm. over it with the river off to the side. I- ah. Very frequently. I want somebody to. Life. So, if anybody ever listens to this that has anything to do with anything, <laughs> <laughs> if you can shut down a road for me, holla at you. A highway at that. <laughs> holla. I, I just want to play. I, I just don't want to say hour. I know how we can make that work on I a just live need recording. A half hour. So, I'm not going to say I know how we can make that work, but. Legally, figure, Ben. Le- legally, I want def- to be able to like define, take videos define, and share that I did it, and be like, "Look legal. at this thing." Legal. Can we make, can we just organize an event like a like a hillbilly <laughs> Grand Prix race? Now I got to pay taxes. Can we do a hillbilly <laughs> Grand Prix race down three fifteen? You know what I've always wanted to do a goddamn soapbox derby. I'll be down. My entire life, I wanted to build a little baby race car all ranky and just run it down a hill and try to race people. I think it'd be a blast. <laughs> Even if I lose. Where would we do it? I don't know. What if we had 
What if we had, what if like all of our like Do tattooed, with the backwards. what if all of our tattooed homies just got together and we did like a tattooed homie soapbox derby? We would end up with one car that worked and three to five other teams of people going, well, like, I don't know how to build a fucking soapbox car. I don't know. We've got like in, in, in and around like our, our homies, like so, we know a lot of really intelligent people let that me, i think would really get into it let me reinsert oh we could do it up in michigan no problem let's just get those homies that are good at it and build one car that we can all hot lap all right See and then we'll take it on to one of those red bull events Ooh. what do they call those where they launch the so cars up off the ramps like cool runnings in the push carts we should challenge and whoever can drive said cart the fastest can represent the push cart team hmm. in a real event. Hmm. Boom. Hmm. Mic drop. Oh, backwards. Hmm. <laughs> oh, backwards. Oh, 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 backwards. Oh, backwards. Okay, so this, we're going to start. This episode is, repre- is brought to you by backwards. Logs. <laughs> My backwards. <laughs> <laughs> like a team buzz. Woo. Oh. <laughs> Baby puffs. Oh. So, hey, if you want to listen to this podcast more, you should go check out the Reinventing the Tattoo app. If you haven't downloaded it, download it now. Easiest way to access. Yeah. That's how you're going to watch us. And then it actually YouTube. really is easy to download. I love it, too, because there's, there's, there's so much on there. There's so much content. You can just get lost and hang out and watch videos on things you didn't even know you were interested in. Yeah. It's a good time. Yep. And then you no, can keep but- up with us until we're on Spotify and iTunes, which we will be in time. But, but it's free and it's easy. Yeah. Right. See, some apps, like you've got to put so much information in this one. It, I think it took me like two minutes to sign up for. Bam. Yeah. So. And then you got all that stuff. And then you got us every week. As a non-tattooer, it's cool to see a different side of it. And, and, you can and listen so, in so on the drawing groups too. And, yeah. Like it's, it's really rad. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I love it. I haven't had much time to look do as much on it as I wanted to. Yeah. Like be participating in stuff lately. But God everything I do, I always benefit from so much. And it's so cool to be able to like, holy shit, I can just sit on here with some of the people I've looked up to my entire career. So like, like just talk to you casually. It's amazing. But I also wanted to swerve the conversation to last night. I had a fucking dope conversation with my client. So talk to me about your conversation. All right. So my client, client, he's an architect. Like we didn't have a ton in common at first and stuff. And like, I'm always trying to like, I don't know, uh, figure out what to talk to you about this to, with this guy a few Either things way. i figured out star wars was a good thing talk about we sat and like talked about star wars for you like a long have told ass time me he was an architect so i could go talk to somebody that i had something exciting to talk about yeah I should, with I, excitement there you go yeah <laughs> passion let me tell you what i like <laughs> oh yesterday like, was well like day. it was awesome to talk to him about architecture and all that for sure but like i could tell like he's in our, into architecture in a different way than like you know like I don't know the way I'd like apply it to my art and stuff where Uh it's like, but it was, it was fun. We did get into some cool things, but all in all, I just remember like, there was like just some like radio silence between us for a while. And I was like, you know what? I really want to know. I'm just wondering what this guy thinks. I'm like, you ever seen a ghost? (laughs) (laughs) like i was just like straight up just like i hit him with it you know because i was like it came up in my head i'm like i genuinely want to know what this guy's gonna say because i have no idea you know he could totally just i was expecting no i've never heard you or something but he was like as a matter of fact i have seen a ghost and i was like yes yes i was so stoked it's like please tell me about your ghost story and he goes on to tell me that uh, I guess when he was like 20 years old, he was in a room with a few other like uh, people, like a sibling or someone. I don't remember exactly who it was, but whatever. He's in a room and sleeping, woke up and there was somebody like sitting on a bench, some like little girl sitting on a bench. And he was like, make he like was staring at it for like 20 minutes, like trying to make it out and like looking at it and just kind of like. For the, he said the first 10 minutes he was he couldn't move like he was like oh, not sleep paralysis but like he could move but he was so like in shock and like in awe and just like watching it and like all of a sudden he said like after a few minutes of looking at it he just got like absolutely he said he got the coldest feeling he's ever felt in his entire life and just got totally struck with fear and all of a sudden was super scared and just stared at it for like 20 minutes and then like he yelled at it in the room and woke up the other people that were in the room and like was like hey stop 
you know, because it was just like sitting there and he knew whatever it was, was, was none of them. Right. And then he said he like stood up and like looked at it. And he said the room was pretty light. It wasn't super dark. <laughs> and uh, he said he like stood up, looked at it, and it just was just, it was gone. It wasn't there anymore. But he said it was totally there, 100%. And he's like, that was his only ghost experience that he has. Was like, that, that was cool. I didn't expect that because it just wasn't up in conversation. Like, okay. So <laughs> until we got into about... that. And then, of course, we got into the aliens. We got into everything after that because I was like, damn, you've had a. You're a I could feel it in his voice, too. Like, he had the fear. He had everything. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, you really felt that experience. Yeah. You're not just like saying something. Like, you, you felt the experience. And that's what I relate to with some of my experiences. I can see it in other people when it's like, oh, yeah, I know when like normality hits the fucking fan. Shut up. <laughs> that wasn't well, at all. So you know, how have shut time up, time <laughs> No, it's my t- <laughs> no, I know. I was just kidding. I was just kidding. <laughs> Me. So I was working on uh, Laura. Uh, we've had her on the show a couple of times. I was wor- working on her night before last, and we were having the like ghost conversation. <clears throat> and I was like, honestly, like she she asked if I thought the building was haunted, basically, and I was like, you know. <clears throat> I often don't feel alone, but it might be me. It might not be the building because I feel that way everywhere. And she was like, ooh. Ooh. And she goes, what if it's you from another life? And I was like, what? And then she goes, or what if it's like you from the future or you from the past? And I was like, what? What if I'm haunting myself? Like, you know, in Interstellar, the dad's (laughs) haunting the daughter. What if I'm haunting hey, myself? How weird that's what that I want to know. I don't know what travel? I think about ghosts. That's what? what I love to hear about these stories, but I want to know what like, science is it. Like, as nostalgic as I am? If it was am? real, let's just say one of those experiences is real and there actually was some sort of ethereal fucking thing there, whether it was that or whether it was a ghost or previous past experience or energy caught up and just memory of existence just replaying itself like some mirror of this reality. real deep, real fast. But if you could time no, travel, like, would you want to go back to the more yeah. fun, peaceful moments of your life and just like check in with you yourself? You're assuming I had fun, peaceful moments. No, I'm just kidding. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I know your family. I know better. Well, to establish yeah, a basis yeah, yeah. here, like Fawn, have you ever seen a ghost have you ever seen something like that many many times i've had really? many many kinds of different kinds of experiences well let's just say ethereal ghost body of something i'm very sure the house terrest- i grew up in was terrestrial haunted. not in the sky not mm-hmm. ufo but like terrestrial ghost like experience um i mean like my little sister sarah's house is haunted yeah like yeah. What kind like, of experiences do you like? You she messes with the thermostat. You can tell when she's not happy. The whole vibe of the house changes. <clears throat> like, she definitely didn't like Sarah's ex boyfriend. He was a douchebag, <laughs> but like, nobody liked him. So it was like, look, I know you've got Sarah's best interest. Like, you want this guy out too. We all do. It's cool. Um, but yeah, there, like, I could, I could talk about many, many experiences. Have you seen a physical entity? Like, a, you know, like a ghost. You know, like imagine like a movie ghost. Okay, so the most well, it doesn't recent have to be time, like that, or just uh, like it. Sometime. The most recent time that I can talk about that would be like a for sure, and then also I was like, "Give me your my phone was famously dead." Okay, so we go, we go to um, famously dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it always, so, it's, a phone is always dead. I just feel like sometimes I'm so distracted by my phone that it doesn't bother me when it dies or when the battery is low. It'll be like, oh, you're about to die. I'll just put you in my backpack. Yeah. Like, uh, like I'll get stuck on Instagram and like reels for way more than I should. Um, But anyways, so we, my friends and I, we are, you know, we're ghost hunting. We're going out to one of the like famously haunted places out in the boonies near where my family lives. And back in the day, there was a pretty gruesome murder here. A guy slayed his family, killed himself. And, you know, some of the buildings are still standing, but the actual house has been collapsed. So we're out there and we're just like walking around, you know, and 
as we're like walking along the corn silo where we're looking through this other building that's like partially dilapidated but you can see like through it and you can see windows you know what I mean like the windows have been knocked out but you can see through the building and you can see like cornfield and like the skyline and lights from the city on the other side so you can see through the building it's not dark dark but like there is something walking <clears throat> towards us and it's faint and I I wouldn't even say it was as solid as a smoky figure but I was just like give me your phone and I just like blindly took my uh my friend Allison's phone and I just like started snapping pictures blindly in front of me and then when we got back to the car and we were looking at them you can see this figure walking towards us like each step he's closer as I'm getting closer to him and you can actually like see where the eyes are in this figure and then the rest of it's just kind of this shadow form so that was like pretty undeniable <laughs> pretty undeniable <coughs> okay um but it, it definitely was one of those like we're definitely not welcome here like they don't so want us here the <clears throat> where like other situations it's like oh i definitely don't feel alone but like they're not paying any attention to me like have you ever like just sat in a like okay ben for instance you have a small child have you ever sat? Have you ever <laughs> have you ever sat on the couch and you're doing your thing and Lily's over on the corner doing her thing, not paying any attention to anybody but herself? All the time, yeah. right? So sometimes it just feels like that, where it's like, oh, I'm doing my thing right here, but like I'm not alone. But they're also not concerned with me. You know what I mean? Like mm, something might be here, but I don't think they care about me. <clears throat> I don't think I should care or bother about assessed. them. What, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, what about you? I'm not alone, but I'm okay with it. Okay, okay. Ben, have you ever seen anything weird? See, like, I... it's not stuff I like to talk about. Um, so we... you don't have to talk about it. Yeah, we do. You fucking made me. Look at you. <laughs> I would, I would rather you talk about it, of course, but you also just don't have to. So we actually went through a extremely um, rough patch at our house to where right after my kid was born, um, oh, Jesus, I don't even know how to start this and that sound fucking crazy. So our daughter kept getting woke up and kept getting... Um, being interactive and having conversations with things that weren't there and this, that, and the other, and not just thermostat changing, but TVs being on things, not working one day, working the next stove, getting turned up all the way on high and scorching pans when there was no thing cooking, uh, all kinds of crazy shit. <coughs> um, it got to the point where we pseudo realized that what was, popping off wasn't just our imagination yeah um and it it got thick fast um we actually ended up talking to a few friend of ours uh his name is skills and he's involved in uh paranormal investigations and things like that and he hooked us up with uh, nice a couple of the people that came over to our house and we uh went through a process that um I still don't trust my memory of what happened. It was that intense. Um, there is probably four, three hours of footage. Um, and it got, it got, it got pretty fucking wild. Um, there's orbs on film. There's things coming down my steps on film. No kidding. Um, so the person that they brought um, is a psychic and um, I don't want to say his name because I don't know if he wants me to talk about him. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> fair. I'm getting emotional. Sorry. Sorry, man. No, nah, man, it was just deep. It was super deep. I did not expect it to be um, that involved. Yeah. And it went from like, um, I need to back up a little bit before we had these people come. Um, there was a point where I got mad. I got really mad at the situation and got really mad because they kept waking up my daughter and playing with her hair and things were happening that were out of my control. And I picked up my kid. 
that's why I'm getting emotional. Yeah. <laughs> so I picked up my kid and I started yelling and I was like, just leave us alone. Leave my house. You're not welcome. Get out of my house. Like I was mad. And I went to walk down the steps and it felt like I got pushed down the steps. And I literally lost my balance. I, I tumbled down the steps and I'm like, all right, these fucking things are touching me now. And it got super thick in our house oh after my that. God, man. It got super thick in our house after what? that. Like, you the, th the thermostat was the least of our worries it never worked we got used to just putting on hoodies like it got nuts and i don't want to get super deep into it because it, yeah that's okay man it, we could sit and talk for hours but the point was that the main interaction was my my child and like whoo that's tough to deal with and it got to the point where we felt threatened we felt that it was something that was trying to hurt our kid so sorry that's, that's all right um so the person that we brought in comes in and essentially does a, a reading of the house and um discusses a few things along the lines of my child is pure energy and light and there's so many things that are drawn to her to um steal her light because she and i feel weird saying stuff like that because like everybody's biased about their kid and everybody thinks their kid's the greatest and this that and the other but like that's what this guy's telling me and i'm just like it expl he, he basically made it seem as because of how much energy she puts out there has been a portal created in our house that multiple things travel through on a regular basis some are friendly, some are here to observe, some are here, some are not nice. Some are here to steal, some are here to destroy, some are here to take, <coughs> protect your kid. <coughs> wow. And it took me zero to a hundred. Um, like I, I've always been semi-conscious of energies wavelengths uh i'm the guy that knew we were in gettysburg because i had goosebumps the size of quarters on my arms you know three hours before we got there because i it just i i've always felt in tune to a certain degree and i don't even like talking about this stuff um but, way to like, go jordan way to, way to ask those <laughs> questions i opened up the, I opened, way to go i opened it up so like Jeez. i opened it up i'm sorry so essentially let me let me cut all the way back essentially these these people came to the house and they set up a couple cameras and brought another person that considers himself a medium and a uh, uh, uh i'm forgetting the exact word but uh empath is the word i was looking for and um, they, they, they went through the house and they felt vibes and they, they the psychic communicated with several different people, um, communicated and banned several different energies, communicated and closed several portals um, and basically said that I have had an energy with me since I've been young. It's a female figure in my family and it's, she's a blue light she's a powerful energy and we're like wait what did you say blue light that's the only thing my daughter says she needs to go to sleep when there are things that are so there were several things wow. that there was no way he could have known that were nail on the head accurate he took a time to communicate with the female that was with me and allowed her to express her concerns which was that my daughter is a light and things are trying to yeah. steal her awesomeness i'm not educated enough on the vernacular of the situation and i feel like i don't want to do it an injustice by my <laughs> ignorance but this is how it was explained to me so it, it was it was a lot fast to the tune of where like I, I went back and talked to the psychic guy again after that um at his house and we, we had another really deep conversation i was there for a few hours and we talked about a lot of things that i need to do to uh open my mind spiritually to be able to help with the situation that my daughter brings um in the most positive way possible um how to encourage her brightness how to encourage her path how to how to keep focused on the positive and things along those lines um but the the experience that night was all filmed 
And I don't want to say like I've been scared to watch the footage, <laughs> but there's, I have the photos of us sitting on the couch while the person is explaining to me about the blue light and they randomly snap photos and right next to my head is a blue orb. And like, there were so many things and the videotape of this night, he, he was kept rewinding and being like, look guys, I caught this. I'm like, just keep the tape rolling. So there's there's a lot of footage, and I I uh, I don't want to say I've intentionally blown off plans, but like I'm kind of leery to sit and watch through it all, and I feel bad for skills because I haven't made it back to sit and go through it. But I'm kind of nervous what it's all gonna show, because my memory of that night was, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Super training, super train of emotions. There was a point in the night That's where, like, wild. I literally was like, everybody has to stop. I need a minute. I'm getting, like, flushed. Like, I'm getting emotional. I'm getting, like, super drained. <laughs> and they were like, okay, so we need to focus on what's... Like, it was... I've never had a four-hour experience that draining in my life. By the time we were done, the house felt like somebody pumped it with helium. I, there's, there's no better way to put it. It felt open. It felt light. It felt amazing. And you don't realize that the type of energy that is around you is what controls you your brain receives the electronic signal as its job mm -hmm. anything in that wavelength that can receive a signal can affect everything in your body and i've never really thought of energy that way to that depth i guess i've always thought about it but not to that depth and it was one of those things that was like jeez <clears throat> the house has been a different place since then I can imagine. But the, he wow. says that, and again, it's one of those things like, I haven't tried, I've intentionally avoided it, but I feel like subconsciously I have. Um, I still need to sit down with him and go through all those tapes and see what happened and like, and like wrap it all up and make sure that we're still focused on the things that we need to be focused on to continue to keep things from. Is this going to turn into tattoo a, collecting and ghost hunting? Right. Hour? Sorry, guys. You can't right. hit me in no, a No, no. I feel like. Tattoo haunting. The tattoo like, collecting and haunting podcast. You notice I just podcast. sat here with my mouth shut like, don't ask me, Jordan. Yeah, I see that now. I see that. But this was all pretty recent, too, within oh, yeah. the last handful That's of months. That's why I asked, yeah, though, like, is because like people have, so many people have, like, stories like this. And they don't realize until you ask. But also, I, <laughs> I don't mean to pick open a scab. But I'm also super... I got, I got crazy alien stories too, but I don't want to go into that either. <laughs> we'll do that one. Yeah, well, yeah we will. Um, but like, it's it's one of those things, like it's, it's a hard, in the wrong audience, you can get a super weird reaction from people from any time we try to bring this up. So we kept it super private. We kept it super family oriented and it's it's our problem. It's not even a problem. I'm not hot. It's the wrong way to look at it. My daughter's so awesome. People want to steal her fucking soul. Okay. Um, so like, I, it's my job to guard that. So I don't even want to look at it as a negative, but like, man, that's a heavy weight to have somebody tell you like continually <clears throat> through life, you're going to deal with paranormal dumb shit because <laughs> your daughter's. Yeah. But if it sounds like awesomeness. it's probably something you've dealt with forever too. So yeah, maybe it's one of those like, we're talking about this event. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is <laughs> yes, by, by being aware that like she's sensitive or intuitive yeah. or whatever label you want to give it, yeah. um, like by identifying that early, it allows you to be open and not like pass it off as crazy well, or it, like pass it off as imaginary <laughs> friends. That's, or, that's what the, the, the main point of it was, was, was don't be afraid to talk to you, your daughter. If she says, I saw something, say, what was it? What did it look like? Oh, did it disappear? That's, and don't treat it as if it's a, uh, a curse. It's a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's an, it's an intuition. It's a, in, in, in tuneness to your surroundings. It's the best encouraged. Don't discourage was the, right. the entire point of everything. And, I'm 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 happy to to stay open minded 
but I still feel super ignorant. <clears throat> it's one of those things like, how do you know what information to dive into? How do you right. know what... Who's Jesus is right. God damn it. Uh, what, what that's what's is so, this? That's what's so what hard is, about like those type of ethereal things that like there's no real substance to. It's only experiential. You kind of have it when in the experience you have it, but then you have nothing afterwards to show for it unless it pops back up. That's awesome. You guys got recordings and stuff. I can only imagine what that well, all looks grew, like. I grew up super religious and super uh, Bible thumping parents. They went four or five nights a week. My parents ran the children's church for fucking years. And so like, I, I grew up in religion. So like the idea of spirits is heavily ingrained in that shit. If you believe it or not, we're talking about angels and things that move through the night all mm -hmm. through that, that yep. the same book. So like uh, it, it's never been a foreign concept of, of, aka demons or ghosts or however you want to label different things moving around so as a kid you, you pawn it off and so that was evil but i'm in tune to, the, to, to you know something different and it's like now as an adult you're like oh how much stuff did i play off mm -hmm. you know like yeah and it, i don't know and, and until you look at it from a different slightly different perspective it, it never all made sense and some things start guy, to make more sense later on once you start like connecting those dots and you don't see it until years later having this guy be like eh, so you've uh you've had this premonition thing your whole life and i'm like how did you what <laughs> so <laughs> like there was a lot of self-exploration what, kind, what kind of premonitions do you have <clears throat> Um, you brought up the red caddy earlier and you just brought up a premonition because I saw that happen before yeah, it happened. I, I knew that car was going to get wrecked when you left. Yeah. Can I be honest? That day, that night? Ooh. Yeah, I almost made you stay. <laughs> I remember you left and I was like, it's New Year's. She's getting ready to. Ah, it'll be all right. Specifically, remember that. So, and I felt like dog shit when you called because I let you leave because <laughs> I didn't listen to it. So where I got hit from the direction I was coming from, it it was a uh, blind two way stop. So the the intersecting road had a stop sign, and there's a house on that corner. So you can't you can't see to tell that there's a car coming. Sorry, my voice is cracking. <clears throat> I was just pulling it out of the shot. But I hit my brakes way before I could have tell, like visually with my eyes, seeing that they weren't stopping. It was just like, yeah. I intuitively hit my brakes yeah. and was like defensively driving around something that, <clears throat> that I couldn't see, but I knew. Whew. Oh man okay yep ghosts and premonitions <laughs> boom, boom, boom. so the, the 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 thing i wasn't ready for through that whole experience was was sitting down with this gentleman afterwards and him connecting those dots mm -hmm. and saying that the things that you've been ignoring and intentionally repressing and that's focus and it i've never I've never had somebody just sit there and be like yeah bro you're not nuts this is you know, <laughs> you're number 17 of the people i talked to in columbus that are trying to figure out what is different about the way they process information mm -hmm. what is different about why their gut intuition is completely different from different people um, why you don't remember your dreams until you remember your dreams. Mm -hmm. Why things that in live play, you feel prompted because you've done it in your mind. And then when you're doing it, you know, I'm going to put my coffee on the edge of the, she's going to, and it's that weird mm -hmm. deja vu is an understatement. It is a, in the scene of the movie from the cut you've already played mm -hmm. you are now the actor in what is happening and i've never had the ability to explain that to somebody 
that understood what I meant. So I can't, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how you handle that same information because mine's never, mine's always live play. You recall, oh shit, I knew this. Mm-hmm. Moments before is a different ball game. Yep. That blind intuition of foresight, for lack of a better term, yep. is, hey, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, and, stop. Right. Move. And there's the, when you're taught to ignore that, as, as most of us are, <laughs> you're, you're, you're told to believe what you can see and don't, you know what I mean? Like, like. Mm-hmm. When people tell you deja vu is fake, but you've had it your whole life, and it's like mm, you've just never I, had oh, it. Then it's not. That's, I just wonder when. Just never had it. You just got to come to the acceptance of like that. Well, that's we we understand. It, like it, it's there. It's real. It's like it's we don't know exactly what these things are, what that is, but there is this weird synchronicity with things. My thing is, is we have taken a lot of energy and effort to divide the thought process of how we deal with the unknown the, the there's so many of the same fucking religions it's ridiculous mm-hmm. because they th- interpreted this one little part different and you know uh it, it's all the same well message, it's really man. not even a different religion it's yeah, language it's, barriers it's, it's language barriers it's a different spin on take care of the fucking people around you love thy neighbor it's the only translucent every religion combining so like i don't understand we've spent so much time to divide from that instead of focusing on what is the energy that connects us all because you know when you're in a room of like-minded people you know when you walk into a place and you're like oh i don't want to say vibing because it's fucking it's dumb so like to 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 walk in somewhere and you walk into a concert you know everybody's on the same beat you mm-hmm. feel it in the room you feel the hype you walk in mm-hmm. you know the energy of the room to, to to label that differently a million different ways a million different times through a million different languages is, is all i look at all of that and i think what was the intention of dividing us on how to focus on the same energy for lack of a better term i don't want to label anything i'm just gonna use it as a generic term I like that. everybody is focusing on some type of energy if we just focus that same energy maybe together i don't want to sound like a super it sounds hippie. utopian one, ben uh, I, I don't want to sound like a super hippie, like, has that ever been tried <laughs> can we just Feel there's all right. there's a there there are two Hear diseases the children that crying. human beings have. <laughs> Hear the children One is competition, well, and the other is greed. Okay, okay. So okay. praise to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the the base of it all to me is food costs money. Okay, it's it's twenty twenty what. 2021? Is that what year it is? The base of all what? Uh, Food costs money. (coughs) Why in a world with mass production, economic genius, robotic arm, self-planning warehouse, food, hydroponic fucking fields inside the the man, man. That's why it costs money. Resources. Resources, it's all the man. Money and capitalism. So you're, you're forced to participate. If there's a place to make money, they're going to make money and they're going to restrict people from getting it, man. Uh-huh. Spend, spend your time loving people, people. That's all I'm saying. If I could live on a barter <laughs> system, I totally would. Just love people I while I you do it. On a we got to play the game. Either. We got to play that shitty ass game. We got to escape it as much as we can. That's but the thing. Like you as it. long as you do it, whatever you do with a ton of love, I fully believe that you'll fucking you'll get wherever you need to get. Like God. the universe of connections will work yep. out in he your, do you in believe in your favor. Like, what? Todd, you ever seen a ghost? <laughs> Todd, no. you ever seen a ghost? Take over, bro. It's your turn. <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah, me neither. Come to my house. <laughs> you really haven't? No. Uh, Jordan, you really haven't? What? Like I've all had, of your I've alien had, experiences? You've I've never had a lot had of like weird a... experiences, and I've had I have had an entity encounter, but I don't I think it was a ghost something really weird and i don't know what it was and i just don't know what my eye made it out to be or what that could have been but it made me fucking super fearful and i ran from it along with one of my friends 
that so i've had one weird experience that could be like equivalent to like a ghost but it wasn't like an ethereal ghost body i've had weird things happen like where i thought things whispered in my ear but i also like i don't know if like when i was like trying to sleep and shit and like i also don't know if that was even real like i know it happened when it happened but also there's i don't know as you get older there's like that brain trick of like wait did that I don't know if that if I can really it wasn't enough for me to be like that's a ghost or something it was enough for me to be like maybe my brain played a trick on me I was falling asleep and all of a sudden you're dreaming you hear something and then you wake back up I was like I don't know when you're but the entity encounter to mm. deny instead of embrace what was that mm-hmm. flash of light oh it had to be nothing right. in my brain I've, I've I could I'm, give I'm you not... countless countless UFO stories countless like things of that nature Talk when it comes to aerials in the sky oh man like i got you but ghosts are always something that i just haven't uh i haven't experienced a lot of i had some weird things but nothing that was on any sort of scale of like i seen that i know what that was Saint. you know what i mean but yeah hmm. and the entity encounter i had that's it's like a half an hour story i gotta say it all i don't even know how to like give you the cliff notes without like telling you all of it you just made me ramble ramble bro <laughs> hit it hit it it's too late to back out now i'm timing you you got 30 minutes go you got 30 minutes go <coughs> all right <coughs> so brower lake <coughs> rockford michigan <coughs> me and a buddy <coughs> we're, we're out ufo hunting because this time in my life <coughs> i'm probably like like 18 19 i'm really catching on to a lot of things that are happening in the sky i'm seeing a lot of ufos on my own my friend that i was hanging out with that night has seen him before and we're on he's living on brower lake i live on bostwick lake so we're on brower lake staying at his house we're like all right let's go walk around the lake and see at night and see if we can see anything cool in the sky <clears throat> so we go out to this he's got a, there's a christmas tree farm right off the lake like on the other side of the lake you know you got houses and then you got the little you know private road and then you got like christmas tree farm <laughs> so we go out there out in the field checking everything out we end up seeing this really cool ufo it was like this green and orange light in the sky but it was moving like this so it was really weird it was two lights they looked like they were connected by some sort of tether and just like moving <laughs> in the sky like that and so those we end up as um, I was like, that's cool. We're into watching that. And that's kind of in the sky, like consistently throughout the night. We're seeing that do different things. Just wondering what the fuck these things are moving like this, through the sky, like it looked like a sperm connected to like another sperm, like, you know, two tails in like <laughs> just moving weird. Wiggly. And like we smoke weed. We weren't tripping or anything. We weren't drunk. <clears throat> like I was fucking UFO hunting. Like I'm like, we're going to see some shit because I see it all the time over top of uh bostwick lake and and those stories i don't even want to get into this is the story we're talking about <laughs> we're keeping it one story <laughs> yeah, right <clears throat> and so um uh, see that green and orange light paying attention to that we keep walking around and we end up seeing a green and orange light on the ground like close to the ground like probably like 50 ish feet away from us so like we're like kind of like on the top of this hill not super high up, but you know, imagine it's kind of an opening. Most of it's just like segment and just like, just like Christmas tree after Christmas tree aligned in rows. And like, this is just like this big opening. And then you got like a big, not a Christmas tree, fucking some other like <laughs> random tree in the middle of the fucking place. So there's like some bushes and stuff. We're like 50 feet away, got the high ground looking down and like, <clears throat> see these like this fucking orange and green light. It's a ball on the ground like one's like one will like move over here and come back down one will like move around come back down and just move around the area and it's like what the fuck is that is that like somebody with a flashlight it wasn't a flashlight it was like an orb you know it was it looked like like at first it looked like orbs and then like you would see them move sideways and stuff and then you could see that there was like darkness to the back of it and so they were like a half orb and like sliced like so it just basically it was like a head shape and then half of it wasn't there so it was just fucking half an oval yeah exactly yeah 
So both of these were moving around. And, but the crazy part, when we started feeling like wondering what the fuck it is trying to like, you know, you're trying to make your eyes out. It's kind of in the darkness, but these are glowing lights affecting the atmosphere around it. You know, they're there, but they're also the same colors of the shit we've seen up there. We're like, no fucking shit. Like, what the fuck is that? We're just kind of in awe of just trying to like assess, like, just like what my client was saying about how, like, he was just staring at it for like 20 minutes, trying to figure out what the fuck is that? Logical We're looking at it, like it. shuffling through everything. Like I'm looking at him like, how let me figure out how that's a guy like that's two people there like let me figure out how my brain sees that in the fucking thing one of the lights goes <laughs> probably like 15 20 feet like nothing just like right up into the tree is just like looking around like nothing it just looks like it's like scanning the area and like floating like going back and forth but i swear to fucking god they were tethered to something so there was something like to the ground they're both connected to each other but like they would go so far away from each other and move mm. around but not like they were fucking floating and moving through the tree you know what i mean they weren't like wasn't like someone like hoisting some yeah. light up or like up there with a fucking stick like That's it was nice. fucking these things were like moving around this area and so you got one now you got one 15 feet up in the tree one down on the ground I'm like yeah because they were those half shaped ovals you could see like the character of them you could see how they would look one way and like look yeah. another way and you could see there was texture to them they look like like a progressive scan tv where there's just like lines mm -hmm. going down the tv <clears throat> and uh they just look like they were looking at the area just trying to assess everything hmm. and so what we do is we're just we're in awe but like we're like should we make like a noise and see if we can get its attention? Let's like, do something. <laughs> and literally like, I want to, I'm like preparing myself, but I I'm preparing myself for the worst. I'm like, I don't fucking know if that's a person. That's a good <laughs> thing to do because we're trespassing. If that's whatever <laughs> that is, like if that's what we think it is, because my eye couldn't see normal. My eye couldn't see like, I couldn't make sense of it. Like it was so weird. I couldn't like put a person to it. I couldn't put any sort of machinery to it. There was no noise or anything like that. And like when it went up into the tree like that, like chills, like just struck. And my friend Keller just goes, Bop! and just like makes super loud noise. Both of these things just like, bam, like one's up in the tree, just like tush, both of them looking straight at us. And like, dude, I couldn't even tell you how scared I was. I've never like, it was so abnormally weird and like i couldn't assess it it just felt it felt fucking alien okay. but i was like i'm i don't know what to say about it i don't know what any of it was that was the experience i turn around and i just start fucking running as fast as i could through this tree i wanted to get out just to the main road again because i wanted to be out of there and after that i was just running thinking like oh my god anything if that something weird there could be more out here there could be anything but they were the same colors of the shit in the sky like it was so similar at the same time and so uh yeah so then his story is when he came back to me he said like he sat there like he was watching it like for you know a couple seconds and like walked forward towards it when it was like looking and he literally closed closed his eyes opened his eyes and it was gone completely gone and he came back to me and he was just like in awe weird hmm. yeah. i have no idea what any of that was but it Yep. That was that. And like, but I can give you more. I, I can tell you more about how I felt about it. But like, I was, I was scared. Like, it was really weird to be that was, yep. that was like a whole new feeling of like, Oh, my God, like, if that was something, I don't know what that was, my mind couldn't assess the situation. And hmm. don't know. Crazy. That's a good time, though. But I also don't want to be like, it was an alien or it was a ghost. It was like, that was weird. And I don't know. <laughs> and I, I was like, real fear, like all. real fear, like of not understanding that thing's intentions. And if it's anything like we, if it was from fucking space, what the fuck would it be doing? And what? I don't know. I don't think it was an alien, but that yeah, shit was yeah, weird. And it was kind of like machine like wanna, the way its face was was like machiney like it was this. like glowing and stuff but there was no way those movements could have the fluid movements and the way that it moved around and the, i don't know hmm. we'll never know we'll never know we'll never, we'll never know, know but i like we'll it nope know. i like that it happened i like that it happened um, i love shit like that just because the more open and the more you talk about those different experiences the more you hear of every person that's like oh yeah mm -hmm. let me tell you about this oh yeah let me tell you about that and i think it's really really odd that the uh like 
excuse me if I don't use all the right words, but like, didn't the Pentagon just release all the UFO like classified yeah. to the public? And yep. Then, yep. And then we were kind of like COVID, and everybody was like, "Wait, what? Aliens are real, or we need a vaccine?" UFOs are a hundred percent real. The and government has said, like, said it. All pretty much all governments of the fucking world have yeah, now said there's that. tons of UFOs. No one really knows what they are. Maybe they are. Maybe it's China's got some crazy technology. But what they're doing is they're going in the water and they're going in the air and they're going in space and they're doing it all without yeah. affecting any of the atmosphere around it. So when they go into the water, they make no fucking anything into the water. They just go right in and come right out. So we just got these orbs of light that are coming in and coming out mm-hmm. like nothing. Anti-gravity. What the fuck? Well, and if that's they're... China, that means someone's got the dopest technology <laughs> ever. Ever, 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 ever. It's going to do, it would do everything and it's going to change the world. So if all of a sudden someone else has got that, it's going to change everything. So I almost hope it's the government. So there's some chance that we can actually get it. Hmm. Um, as soon as you're done making money on it, we'll see something about it. <laughs> if the government's involved and we don't know, it's probably because they make a shit ton of money somewhere along mm-hmm. the line. Let's throw that out there. Mm-hmm. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Woo-hoo. Follow the dollar. <laughs> Not give, to be give me the UFOs, serious, man. Always follow the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always that's, follow the money. That's how you figure out everything. Follow the dollar. Yep. You want to know why dolphin safe tuna isn't safe? Follow the dollar. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh, man. Did that's you watch so that Sea Spiracy? <laughs> You did. You I, did, didn't you? I don't even want to talk about it. I didn't watch it yet. You guys keep talking about things uh, like that. You don't want to ever eat salmon only... again, do you? I love salmon. Is this farm know. raised? I don't want to watch it because I like seafood. I hate it. I'll be like, but, but I, I, I only, only eat lake I know cock I fish. You like, <laughs> you like seafood, Todd? Oh, yeah. God, I love seafood. Mm. I'm just saying, there's ways to do it right, right now. Scallops. Are we just hungry? Can we like fucking DoorDash something or something? Yo, I got a bunch of chimichangas I just made yesterday that I can throw in the oven. They're so fucking dank. Yo, are you ready for some dope chimichangas? Chimichangas. Do you not make Not chimichangas, enchiladas. Oh, that's no, hard out. I was in for chimichangas. Oh, enchiladas. oh shit, yeah. What's the really difference good. between a chimichanga and an enchilada? I think you should give it a chance. Enchiladas are corn tortillas. Okay. Chimichangas are a flour tortilla that is fried. Fried. Okay. Give me that flour fried goodness. I feel it. All right. Mm-hmm. I feel it. Mm-hmm. Enchilada okay. corn grossness with red sauce. I like the red sauce, but the, the corn. You just Bottom denied corn. my corn's the best. I, my I gift. That was my gift. To you. I made those yesterday I in cannot... preparation for that today. That I was hoping tomato to tomato surprise base? you at the end of this podcast That's with enchiladas, base. man. Lies. <laughs> trying. Lies. <laughs> what is it, Todd? It's pepper based. Pepper based. Yeah, I like the red yep. sauce. Yeah, I love red sauce. So is it just roasted red, red peppers? Depends. Pureed? Well, uh, no, they're they're dried and then they're uh, they're uh, rehydrated. You know, you sort of simmer them and then you uh, blend them up, and there's your sauce. I don't know. It's Same delicious. Way I make tomato soup. <laughs> you know, I haven't had a good tamale in a really long time. They had mine. There was a family in the town that I grew I up in drive. that made the best tamales, and that's what I hold all tamale standards to. But it's like, you know, they were legit and made with love. I think that's the missing ingredient. The uh, the shop next door, <laughs> yep. Virgin White Hall, has tamales one day a week, and I don't remember what it was. They're a lot of work. Delicious. They are a lot of work. That's why they only had it one day a week. <laughs> They get mad. You try to buy a bunch, and they'd be like, "No, send more people." I'm like, "No, these are four more people." They're like, "No, limit of two. I'm like, "I always ah. felt like it was such a special gift when, like, one of my friend, one of my Mexican friends, would be like, "Hey, do you want a tamale?" And be like, "I would yes. love 14 hours of your labor." Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank thank you. you. Thank thank you for being thank a friend. <laughs> same, same with good smoked meat. Absolutely. Like, if you stayed up all night. We're back on barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> It always circles back. I, I'm sensing a theme today, and there might be some meats in our future. <laughs> well, what are we doing today, Ben? What's what's happening after are this? Are we doing tattoos today? We are doing tattoos today. Can no we way. talk about tattoos on the tattoo podcast? Yeah, what do you want to talk we're, about, we're Ben? Ghost today? I don't only, know. Only, I just thought it was odd. Only like, for a minute. Only for a minute? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah we're doing tattoos today. We're working on my legs somewhere. On the legs. 
yeah, I'm excited about all of this. I just started rubbing my legs and like uh. in anticipation. <laughs> Did you see the project that uh, that Max Lee that I was working on? Uh uh-uh. That uh, screen scare that shit, bro. Oh man, how about I've been so see. stoked about it. Show us it's what so you're working good. with. Oh, yeah, I don't screen to look at. You get the weird foreground, background. Are you guys doing this hip squeak? Kill it. I'm extremely dehydrated. Is there any beverages? I in have, I have a water right here if you would like it. Well, guys, I'm going to have to check out of here. I got to do some things. All right, Todd. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining thanks us, for man. Yeah, you're always thanks, welcome. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah. Love thank it. Thank you. Thank you. You're the best. Nice to meet Talk you with to the you shirt soon. on. Yeah. Enjoy the day, <laughs> guys. Yeah, you too, guys. Peace. Bye. I love when Todd's able to join us. He's fun. I really do. Cool. Uh, it's hit or miss, but sometimes there there will be a run of several days in a row where I wake up with weed messages from him. <laughs> <laughs> what messages, if you will? Ooh, from Ooh. the Weedagram. Did you see this one? Oh, yeah. That Can one's looking play? super good. Nice. You just worked on this the other night it's again? Coming. I missed it. Yeah, it was a couple. It was before I left. So I think like a day before I left. Yep. Looking good. Every time I see someone's tattoo ditch, I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what we worked on too. That was definitely. I'm sorry. So Trooper though. I try to be really kind when I work on that area of the arm and I try to do like portions of it and not like all the way around in one day. The swelling sometimes is pretty intense. Do you have any photos anywhere of uh, what we've been working on? Um, I, you know, I feel like it's still pretty crazy. We'll get, we'll get some good footage today. <clears throat> Are you guys doing the camping scene today? Yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be dancing in that some more. Stuff, so it's, it's so big. We got so we got floating <laughs> forest. It's floating forest and ethereal weirdness and we'll get there. It's floating forest we and baked out daydream base. is what it is. Are you is. loving it? Do you love the piece? Um, I absolutely love the piece. How much? Uh, like measure love? Uh, can you measure love? No. Do you try? It is on or off. <laughs> My love is all, in. all consuming or I fucking hate you. That's beautiful. Now that's beautiful. The the that's piece how I roll. <laughs> roll in Juliet, all in, man. The piece uh, that I'm working on on <clears throat> Ben, it's gonna murder be murder suicide. It's Always. so big, but Ben and I are so close, so I know that like he's it's got the patience the for me to just Everest, sit right? and yeah. um we just, just started. work the detail in each yeah. and every little area where We've got like a good portion of the outer panel, like a solid first layer. I, I am but, like, still in the we just started. Yeah, yeah, that's we, we where got, we're at. We warmed up. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I want to get this panel close to completion before we wrap further around your leg. But um, um, but I, I really want to push the detail on this one. There's a couple of paintings <laughs> that we're kind of trying to combine and achieve the tricks of. So I, I enjoy being able to mentally say whatever you want to do you can do because it's 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 one of those like that's why i like working with homies <laughs> it's so much it, it's it's so hard for me to uh i don't want to say branch out that's, that's the wrong terms but like the trust between an artist and a, and a uh, collector is insane to me um and it really does get easier the better we know one yeah. another, huh? To, to be able to just be like, oh, I've got zero qualms. You do you. It's going to be sweet. It's a super mental release. And I have to say, like, what weird little twist is going to get thrown in? What, you know, like, what mm-hmm. thing didn't we talk about that they're going to take some creative liberty? And not that I am like that with any of the things that I own, but that's always a, a, a thought when you're having somebody else interpret art for you. Mm-hmm. They, it's somebody else's interpretation of art. No, no matter how you look at that, you're looking through somebody else's eyes. And there's always this weird, is it the same interpretation of the idea that I had in my mind when we started this conversation at that review point? So to not even have that, to be able to just be like, now nah, just tattoo. <laughs> what do I want? I want you to tattoo. And <laughs> like, <clears throat> it, it's, it's, it's super mentally releasing as a collector just to be able to be like do it just go i really like the freedom when i can just like point to a painting that i've done and be like can we do something like this and then maybe something like this yes 
and then maybe some of these shapes and like when you can see like you can see the the experiment you can see the first brainstorm of how to work through these shapes and how to work like you can see you can see no matter how crazy it's going to look, this is what it's going to end up looking like. <laughs> yeah. When there's already that visual, like even if it's different, that's what we're going for. There's that Trust like the process. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's like, I don't know. I guess anytime like Adam was working on me, that's how it would be. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes you, you'll see like the first layer and it's like, man, I can't believe like he did all of that and just like this weird lavender and green color. And then the next <laughs> two sessions when all the other colors get filled in around it and the darks go in and the bright colors go in and you realize that he just selected the most neutral color and then built off of the middle and was like, oh, okay. I don't have to go dark to light. Like, okay, all right. Um, it kind of just revealed that I could tattoo like i paint more uh, tricks more tricks more tricks yeah, yeah yeah and it makes me excited when people want tattoos that look like my paintings yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um and again it's easy when you're like i, I like everything i'm saying yeah, it was <laughs> do more of that uh, it, it was the same when i went to tattoo my back it was it was very gratifying i, I worked with rich with a lot of tattoos i, I liked his style he's, he's done a lot of work on me and to just be able to be like no nah, bro just like just like tattoo my back <laughs> mm-hmm. well what do you want I, I want you to be pumped about tattooing my back draw something up i'm not gonna hate it i promise <laughs> like and you and rich already knew each other really well absolutely too. and that's what i'm saying he he knew what i would like anyway mm-hmm. he's followed me since we've known each other since i've not had tattoos <sighs> you, i trust what you're going to lay out. Do you feel like it gets easier the longer you've known a client? I mean, yeah, definitely. You can add, you know what I like because we've known each other. You know, I like the painting because we've talked about the painting. Like, Mm -hmm. you know know what I mean? It's it's, it's like, could be that, but it also could be the the pressure on the artist of like, I know you so well that it's like the pressure of putting like, Oh shit. What do we do? No, it, it's more of I want you to be fully. So I could see both. I could see, definitely see both ends of that for sure. Yeah, yeah. But again, I would. I don't think I, I could approach that unless you have that. Yeah, I think you're much homie, better homie off. Homie much better off. Much you know? much better off with that. And I think. I mean, that understanding is going to come a lot more when you know right. when you know each other so well. And for large pieces like that, it, it's it's it super freeing to just be fully trusted like yep tell me when you're done <laughs> just just tell me when you're done because <laughs> it's it's you, you you don't have to be is he gonna throw some weird green shade on there somewhere right like, it, it, it's i love it, I love it, I love it. much enjoy getting tattooed by only over random piece like yeah. Not that I have a ton of random pieces, but it's nice to be. <laughs> it seems super disconnected to to street shop it in my mind now. I can't. Um, I nice honestly, I can't imagine you, know you walking in and having awesome a stranger work. tattoo you. Have you? Do you have any stranger tattoos? Never. Like I just felt like getting tattooed, and this guy was the only guy available that day, and no, uh-huh. where I was in such and such a city, I had to get tattooed. That I, never happened. I, I did that with an ex. We were in Windsor and mm-hmm. did the whole street, and it was so it felt so cold and disconnected. It was it was awkward, um, but like I got tattooed by the same guy for ten years, mm-hmm. and then got turned loose to all the people in his shop when he retired. So these are again were people I saw come up in the tattoo industry at the same what time you, as getting tattooed. Why don't you go tattooed. ahead and, and drop some of the names of who you've collected from again in case <sighs> in case listeners haven't heard. Um, so my tattoo collection started with uh, a lot of Dan Wesley's tattoos. I still actually, he came back to tattoo and I've got to collect some new pieces from him. Mm-hmm. Um, but then uh, Richard Cook, Kevin Stress, Denny Michaels, Toby Kalich, Fawn Baker. Um, they're I'm always bad at this because I always forget people. Um, it's okay. That's a pretty good, solid lineup. David Boggins has helped me to get tattooed. He actually was the first person to tattoo my hand. Um, <laughs> like, that's a lot of different people. Lots, lots of people, but it's I don't all. I think that, I could count more than my one one hand. That's all the same shop 
all those people worked at the same place at some point together they all came up yeah. in the same art community what shop uh, was it body language you know name drop shamelessly uh, i love body uh, we language. had it's still uh, up and running it's we had the owner right of body language on joey knuckles several episodes ago i, I kind of want to reach out and have him on again uh, joey's uh the mecca if you will he owns uh, how many like 72 tattoo studios in columbus now yeah, maybe it's 73 <laughs> yeah, i don't know might be, but he's he's kept body language a lot, uh, all of them Four, he, four. Uh, West, West four. ran it since what ninety two, I believe. So it's it's one of the longer standing tattoo studios in Columbus. Like it's uh, a lot of history in that building. But it was it was cool to go back. How many um, heavy hitters came out of those um, um, those doors? A lot, a lot of heavy lot. hitters. It Nate was a Marty solid team. was there. Uh, Davey Rips, uh, I left him out. He worked there. He tattooed my hand. He tattooed my. Uh, legs and thighs like Davies. What are you doing there, Jordan? Awesome. Eating cookies. Um, I'm chum. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people that 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 came through that shop that have have changed the way Columbus tattoos. All those people went and started their own businesses and there are a lot of the prominent names in Columbus now. In so each Grace, of their American styles, Crow, absolutely. Like, they all went and did their own thing, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm leaving anybody out. Hollow Earth. I mean, Nathan Marty's even out there mm -hmm. running his own shit. Mm. It's amazing to watch your friends do well, and I would uh, I deeply apologize if I've forgotten anybody. Denny's running Nobility Tattoo, and uh, Young outside. I think it's Adams or outside of Youngstown. I'm sorry mm -hmm. if I'm getting it wrong, but uh, all these people that were in that same environment took the mindset of of I can pick up this ball and run and went and progress their art and progress how they did. And it's amazing to watch people take that. I was in a street shop busting script all day, honing a craft to I've now built my own environment. I built how I want to do tattooing and have people coming up underneath me. It's, it's interesting to it's see a how super cool place to be in to see all those mm -hmm. guys do well. And if I left a single name out, I still fucking love you so much. I'm it's sorry. interesting to see how different each and every one of them, like their work is. Yeah. And all like having those those same roots kind of starting out, and they've all like grown and. Yeah, I, they had such a positive art environment at that time when all mm -hmm. those guys were there and even before that um, um they always painted they always hung out and it was i was a collector i, I, I didn't work i, I mm -hmm. ended up working there later in life don't get me wrong but like early collecting it was cool to see that kind of like oh dude that's sweet you should change this a little bit to watch that that healthy competition um and and continual uh Look at the next one I did. Look at the next mm -hmm. one I did. Look how cool this one was. Look how many. Oh, wait, look at this little mm -hmm. trigger. And to, to see all those guys just just fall into their own styles and, and all kill it in their own way and, and and do it their own way and now be as successful as they are. I feel super privileged to watch them all grow and to have later in life collections from these guys. Like it's 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 really rad. I, it's an experience that I didn't think I, I never planned on having in my life, mm -hmm. you know, but to be that connected to that many tattooers that have made such an impact in Columbus is, is an honor and a privilege. It's funny when you it's hope that shooter, like one you know? of your buddies gets serious and makes it and makes a name for themselves. But when they all do, yeah, they it all was just the whole crew, they all one at a time it, step up to the plate and it's nuts. Yeah. It's nuts. And, it's they, awesome and they are see. all doing it. Yeah, but that, this is exactly why Columbus is such a powerhouse for the tattoo community. It's because of that healthy competition first. 10 and 15 years ago. They were all grinders first, mm -hmm. tattooing whatever. That was everybody my wanted thing. to learn. Everybody wanted to be a better artist. People would come in like, can you do this? And they'd all look at it and be like, I, I can do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to watch that healthy competition of like, oh, if you don't want to do it, I'm going to slay it. Like, and it was to see them go from the guy that liked to do traditional to then move into ultra traditional Japanese and, and use the same techniques that were taught with the bold lines and all that mm -hmm. to transfer to this new stuff. Like watching those guys just implicate daily grinding into what they do and love. They didn't always love doing the script on the neck. 
they didn't always love doing the the skull on the arm for the 3800th time but what it did was it honed their technique mm -hmm. and to have that continual flow of traffic of tattoo 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 that shop was never slow right so to get that kind of practice for lack of a better term and then be able to watch them develop their own art i'm still super humbled to watch it all go down proud papa yeah not papa I proud like all proud, i did was sit there proud cousin back. <laughs> proud cousin standing yeah. in the corner a little hang along my boys a little hang Dead. along if you will and i've always been pseudo my boys i've always been pseudo involved in the tattoo community and mm -hmm. I, I will help any of those people at any moment at any time and they all know that um but like i've always just been a side by clinger <laughs> <laughs> i just want to get tattooed fair but yeah fair. It's, it's it was it was a super cool experience again you guys get me rambling was that no, that's what we want is a race. Whole point of a podcast. Podcast. We want to ramble. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good times. Good times. Street shop days. Street shop yep. days. We all it had was, our, I had my day. That's it was sure. so much fun watching people come in and be like, I want to get this rose with a dick in it on my face. And they're like, no, you don't. I'll pay you extra. How about we put it somewhere else? I swear to you, this is exactly what I want. And it just like, this guy's about to get dick tattooed on his face. <laughs> like, it was the best. And it's, it's as hard as they tried not to do the, the cliche things. It's what everybody wanted. Mm -hmm. We do feather counts. <laughs> feather counts was my favorite game. So we'd take a week. And in that week, how many times did you do a feather tattoo? <laughs> or uh, right. the crows flying away mm -hmm. or, or whatever. And, and, and people would come and be like, hey, I want this memorial piece of a dandelion getting blown away i want like, a star or let's do a cool tattoo i really want a star uh, but if we did like this galaxy scene with maybe an accent on a star or maybe even set up like a no oh, i just want a black star right with a like cross. a nautical star with a cross uh, just a black nautical okay. star. Okay. Well, it's got to be. A no, I don't it, want it shaded. I just want it like, black and white. But I, I want just, it to symbolize a cross. In, in my mid-20s, I ended up running the desk. With a quote, with a quote running through it. And, and half of your job as a shop manager and running the front desk is like filtering through that <laughs> and then getting to the core of what tattoo can be done mm -hmm. and then finding somebody that's available to do it. So you always have to go through that process. And it was such a grind when people were like, I want my well, grandpa's name, grandma's name, their cat's name, Bobo. He was super precious to the family. Uh, 16 roses <laughs> for their kin. But and I want each one of them in a different color. Individual color. Can we put little baby initials in the bottom of Name it? and dates Rose, and Rose. possibly portraits if you can if fit you it can in there. If you just do thumbnail <laughs> portraits, I know they're tricky, but I've seen it done on the television. They don't got to be big. They don't got to be it, real big. It was it's fun though. Mm -hmm. I get to see a lot of cool tattoos get done. Because <laughs> for every weird idea, there was like um, five rad tattoos that got done that day too. Of uh, you know, like to to watch that level of art get pumped out of a building all the time was was really cool. Yeah, really cool. It's the same thing that's cool about walking around Red Tree. Like having having the privilege and honor and to have access to the building whenever I want, I can just pop in the back and just like walk through and be like super dope to two. I, I, I think that every day that I walk around, Fawn's <laughs> working on some super dope ass tattoo. Then you got uh, like Keith working on some super dope tattoo. Right. Brandon will have some super every realistic color piece. Station and it's like Daryl will be doing something half the time. You can't stop by and not expect to spend a half an hour just going, ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> right. I have to be like so conscious about my like little visits. Like I'll go walk around and I'll go to each room for like a minute. But right, I'm, like right, it's right. so easy to get I caught in a 20 minute conversation. I don't want to invade. That's why I'm always just popping it I out. try to do it throughout the day. Like I'll say hey to those immediately around me. And then like as I'm settling in with my client and like getting my trash bag and getting my rinse water, I'll like pop in the next rooms and say hey. And then when I run downstairs, I'll pop my head in the back room and say hey. So usually it takes me a couple hours to make it all the way through to right. say hey to everybody. But like I, I like popping my head in and standing there and talking and like thoughtfully looking at what they're working on. And it's it's like, it's, it's kind of weird sometimes. It's like, all right, you either need to make the commitment to say hi to everyone, or just sneak in and out before nobody sees you. 
I don't think just sneak Yep. The group sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I yeah. do that. Hi, bye. Hi, bye. Sometimes, sometimes I gotta do it. Yeah. Very rarely. I just, if like I gotta like fix a sink or something, best pay is come at like eight in the morning because you know, you'll see like Brandon tattoos don't start until <laughs> nine, <laughs> ten o'clock. Right. Then at the latest, a couple of knock early birds. Out, knock it out and bounce. Yep. Good times. It is kind of cool at our studio. We don't necessarily have hours. Everybody's by appointment only. But like, there's probably two to three hours a night that somebody's not there. Like it's it's like a twenty hour a day studio. Yeah, it's, it's uh, mm-hmm. Marty and I so. usually leave active. in the wee hours, and then Brandon has morning appointments quite often. Um, and then the it's warehouse cool. workers are from there the outside super from the people around it's gonna look fairly busy because every day it's popping off yeah so every day always people coming and going i love that all the, all the neighbors have now painted <laughs> right. yeah yeah i know right yeah it's like a red tree alley yeah, yeah i know I, I tattoo i tattoo the, one of the guys that works at that Probably. graphic that pepsi graphic design place right there yeah yeah and he's that's what, exactly what he said he's like we painted it you guys did the mural so he's like that inspired us to paint it so we look better right. next to you guys right Good. Bringing the building up Woo-hoo. or bringing the area up. Right. That whole little area is Moving coming up. Moving on up. up. I love listening to Derb talk about uh, the, uh, the the upcome of Columbus. Right. Like, all the, all the beautiful this. gentrification coming in. <laughs> I wasn't going to go that far. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah, he's, he's like, it is what it is. It's coming through. It's going to happen everywhere. Cool it's going to be cool. It's gonna they be are. Awesome. They've broken ground on a lot of new apartments. But like the thing right is in those areas studio. is they're really shitty and there's really like nothing in those little areas. Like to put in the things that are going to put in, it's not really going to, I don't think it's deep displacing or really throwing really anything off. It's just going to bring nicer things. To, it's just going to bring nicer yeah. things to mm-hmm. the area. Yep. I remember when you got lost around there, you turned around. It's a completely different area now than it was when I was a kid. Yeah. You'd be like, Oh, where, what happened? Mm, there uh, are still some pretty sketchy little cuts, yeah, but, but they're really, that, it's but really, it's few and far between now mm-hmm. in comparison to, you know, that's that's a cool thing about Columbus. One one thing about Detroit is Detroit is very, for lack of a better word, it's very segregated. And it's not necessarily like black or white segregated, but it's very rich or poor segregated. So like if you're in a good part of Detroit, you know you're in a good part. But if you're in a bad part of Detroit, you know you're in a bad part of Detroit. You don't end up there by accident. Right. Whereas Columbus, Columbus is like mostly nice and it's just continually getting nicer. And there's just like a few little peppered little blips that are kind of like, you know, what would have been hood that haven't been like rejuvenated yet. So like Columbus, for the most part, if you take a wrong turn, just go two or three more blocks and it's okay. <laughs> just, just keep just keep going and it'll be all right. I was talking to a guy um, looking at roofs and we stopped by a property to look at it for him. And he's like, yep, um, that has worked. It worked. Like, for instance, in Columbus, do you ever hear anybody Another say, I there. was deep in the hood? Yeah, that never happened. No, it's like there's that sketchy couple of blocks over there and then it's fine. But he, yeah. He's literally like, <clears throat> I own that house, I own that house, I own that house, I own that house, I own that house. And he points around and he's like, bought them off for $3,500, $4,500. <laughs> I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, can we inspect them all? I'm like, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, let's do this. No, they were trash. There's nothing I could have done. Not, um, not insurance. Yeah, but it was one of those things that was like to think about the people that went in and bought a half a city block at six grand a house, three grand a house, are now sitting there getting a hundred and what for the lot. Then people are demolishing the house is insane mm-hmm. to me mm-hmm. i uh, don't know much about economics but i feel like there's gonna be a little baby flock influx of new money in columbus yeah because all these properties that have been generational properties or people that have picked them up to uh try to flip them or whatever the case okay. is or condemned or run down or whatever it is these properties that were worth nothing years ago are worth a lot of money now mm-hmm. the columbus market is nuts right it now. is really crazy it's like that everywhere yeah it's just it's the the influx of people coming in is insane mm-hmm. i mean you got to think of all the big jobs that are coming in i mean 
Facebook just opened up a huge place here. Amazon is abundant here. Like I'm talking major headquarters. If you drive one hour outside of the city, it's and every it's every medium sized city is getting is really starting to pop off. So medium sized cities are going to end up being big cities. They're just going to keep growing. I just, I just want to move to the country. <laughs> so <laughs> I, know. I want to, I honestly, I want to get out of the city. So bad. Ben and I have been homies so for a couple bad. of years now. And like for when we first started hanging out, <laughs> like he would get so frustrated in his, at his dog and he'd be like, she needs a farm. And like for the, and she's a really good dog. And I was like, man, it's, it's a bummer that he's always like, wanting to get rid of her and then one day it clicked like oh he needs a farm for the dog yeah i don't want to say <laughs> one day it to totally clicked it was like oh that's his way of he needs a farm. a farm got it it's the, the dog is the reason he needs yeah. a farm it took yeah. a while to click at least a couple months it's just like how you justify getting a second dog well the first one is slowly you need to frame. well that's why i got a kitten mister he's a, he's a man cat now though when we got Miska, we thought she was not going to be the breed of dog that she is. And we were told that she was going to stay small. And she was like this, like, da, 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 da. I don't remember what it was, but the dog stayed small. And she's not. She's an Australian herder. And, and she wants to herd. She gets she so wants excited. She herd everything. Mm -hmm. She herds cats. She herds my daughter. She herds the neighbor's kids. Me when I come over to visit. Everything. And I love her to death, but she has more energy than I know what to do. Hold on. We got to explain the dynamic now. So you've got Miska who is doing everything she can to hurt you and control the situation. <laughs> even if all the control she wants is to just get pet. That's my she's, she's trying her hardest to hurt you and control the show. And then you've got Ots like, play with me, play with me, play with yeah. me. So he's doing the opposite of hurting. 75 pound old English bulldog as well. Um, and he wants to smash you with his face 72 times when he says hello. They're like time. both intense, high energy, but totally opposite brands of Ots high energy. Ots for like six minutes. <laughs> He's like, ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, but Miska, I've taken her on, uh, I don't know, 16, 17 mile hikes. And then you get to camp and she runs laps still. And I'm just like, dog, dog. I don't know how to make her tired. <laughs> like, they don't. They don't she, get she tired. Carried, she carried weight. She carried her own mm -hmm. food. She had a little little baby harness pack on to carry her own belongings. She carried her own tent. Nope. Still ready to run. Chopping into bits. She needs. She needs a farm. Yeah, she does need a farm. She, um, she needs to hunt gophers on the back line. <laughs> so she's. she's She's born for it. You'll find a farm. I just feel bad. Like I'm, I'm keeping her from her full potential. You know what it's like to see somebody struggle and not be able to grow? I mean, if you had her and like her ducks or chickens, she'd be happy. She'd just be herding the ducks or chickens she all day long. The and then you'd have then you'd have the fresh eggs. Mm. Best of both worlds. I would I would do some chickens. They're really pretty easy. I mean, pretty you kind easy. Of just, they eat whatever. Yeah, they're Brittany's garbage disposal. Yeah. She loves them. She's gotten attached. I would uh, I'd do some chickens. Their names are Fancy. I think Fancy and Reba. <laughs> See, I kind of want to get like if I had a, if I had this space, I would get farm animal pets and then just like order half animals so I wouldn't have to kill my pets. And still have the experience of having the milk cow and not having a butcher cows. Mm -hmm. But then since we're, you know, out with some homies, they sh you know, I'll have the hookup on half cows and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, fill yeah. the fill the fruit the same way. Put them yeah. slaughter their stuff. Oopsies, yeah. I'll just buy it from them. Be like, this is my baby cow. Yeah. He's safe. We're kicking it. We rescued him. We're kicking He's it. cool. Yeah. He's a grass puppy. Jordan, <laughs> would you have a grass puppy? Um, what's a grass puppy? A cow. A cow. Oh yeah. A pet yeah. cow. Not like Fuck a cow yeah. intended had, to be slaughtered. Yeah, once I have a lot of uh, land, I would definitely have what one. We're talking about just displacing. Maybe moving out of the east side, out to the country. No. Maybe very hillbilly style. I don't know. Can I'm we down. strike oil or something first? I mean, I'm down to even like Can we do in the reverse country. hillbillies? I'm down to even live in the country and have like a treehouse, treehouse residence. Tiny little pole barn, treehouse. 
Um, yes. Would you live in a tree house, Ben? I feel like if Emily I didn't have to would go through not the, be happy in a tree house. You didn't ask if my wife would live in a tree house. Yes, if I would live in a tree house. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think she'd be on board. Um, but like, my thing is, is I don't want to go through the process of having said tree house. Can straight, you can tell podcast is going late. Everybody's phones are going off. Um, it's not yet, actually. Oh, it's just, yeah, we're, we're on schedule. Um, it's actually not but it was Lauren was. checking in hmm. and saying, hey. Um, Thanks, Lauren. So, I don't want to go through the process of having it built and having to uh, the headache of. I want to walk up and it be done and be mm -hmm. like, "All right, so you guys have got this all figured out. Everything works. Everything's so if you done. Found a tree house. You're down. You've been living in this tree house with no problems with plumbing, electricity. And Are you da, da, telling da, da, da. me you've been living the bougie life? Then, pest free then maybe mildew free do i want to pick some random fucking willing to build a tree house person and say build my dwelling that's you know don't sleep higher than you're willing to fall i hammock camp a lot that's the uh that's the golden rule right there don't sleep higher than you're willing to fall and i feel that would apply to shoddy construction work on a tree house as well hmm. you imagine living like yep. an ewok right you're fucking kicking it you're sitting in your bed Boom, your bottom supports go out. Now you're flying through the air at seven o'clock in the fucking morning, laying your face down on some pine needles and shit. Just grumpy. This might be arrogant, but I feel like I would build an excellent tree house. Like, okay, not build. I would design. I would design an excellent tree house. And with the right help, I would build an See, excellent, sturdy tree house. I just feel like there's things in life you leave to professionals. That's on the list. It's on the list. You let people that build houses build houses. I don't. I'm, I'm comfortable with structural geometry, Ben. <sighs> nope. I feel like it's a knack. Nope. Nope. Yep. Nope. That's why I'm in sales. And yeah. Not, structural not in stuff. I'm actually pretty good with. <laughs> um. I, I did this nerdy science thing when I was a kid called Science Olympiad. It's like this competitive science thing where you compete with other nerds. I will out science you, motherfucker. Anyways, <laughs> there was a bridge building one. What? And then how much weight did the bridges have to support? A lot. I can't remember what the marks and stuff were, but like I'd have a bridge like I think 12 to 14 inches was the length, if I can remember correctly. And so it'd be like an inch to two inches tall. However, however, I designed it for the year, but like mm -hmm. it'd be like a whole entire bucket full of sand. So like <laughs> I love you know, your weight metric. One 48, bucket of sand. 48-ish pounds, something crazy like that. Um, balsa wood. Yeah. Okay, uh, balsa wood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then like did later in high school. Yeah. No, I did really well oh, with yeah. it. Yeah. Um, also, I did the airplane building. <laughs> and then there uh, later on in high school, it went from bridge, bridge building to you had to build like a boom out of the same material. So like a boom that protruded rather than a bridge that spanned a gap so i went to a high school with 73 people in my graduating class my i was a nerd man cool shit was pretty limited i was a nerd <sighs> i was like the art nerd so we, we had the art department that was the same three people for the four years that you were there <laughs> and did everything cool and then everybody else went to art do you know what i mean like there definitely wasn't a healthy pool of artistic people mm, i would have been so. like one of the 12 that <laughs> just <laughs> like, got to chill in the art room and do whatever we wanted all day so like some days i'd go to all my classes other days i'd be like um i'm here can i go to the art room can i, draw can I go to the stuff? band room or sometimes it'd be like since we're not even doing anything that pertains to me today because i played french horn so sometimes i literally was not included in some stuff mm -hmm. can i just go over to the art lab <laughs> I think over there. Let me express myself in a different way. Yeah, it worked out well. Yeah, I was I was in band a lot. I think my senior year I had four or five periods of band, if you count the study hall mm -hmm. down there. It was a lot. I'm still not like great at it. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. I you know, 
I, I bet if I picked up a trumpet or a, a French horn or a mellophone or any of the other oh. crazy brass instruments, I bet I could still, I bet I could, <clears throat> could still do some stuff. I happen to have acquired a mini trumpet. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, we still haven't, I, you still haven't bust that out while I was there. Well, here's the thing about the mini trumpet. It's loud as. Because it's a trumpet. I can't play it quietly. So you have to be prepared for full volume because it's baby. It takes a lot of air work. Mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. have to be prepared for full volume brass, man. It's oppressive. Oppressive. Um, <laughs> he oppressive. said it's mm. oppressive. It's I, oppressive. I've, I've played it a handful <laughs> of times with no one home. <laughs> it's a lot. That's it's, really funny. That's a lot. That's so funny. <laughs> I haven't played a trumpet since I was in high school. Right? Okay. So I can hack my way through the scales, but I don't remember how to play anything. So I'm looking up music, trying to figure out how to play stuff. And I'm like, you never knew how to read music. You just looked at the guy's hand next to you and made it up as you went along. <sighs> okay. So here's what we're going to do next Thursday that none of us are working after podcast. Let's get together. My house, I got the piano. We'll bring the drums. I'll put them in my van and bring your trumpet, plenty of guitars. Probably um, down. down. Let's jam and make some real theme music for us. We just need a few handfuls of like groovy tracks. Can we develop our own backing music? For... That's what I'm saying. Uh, Let's take a Thursday and do it. First of all, first of all, someone needs to get a continual sound wave machine to back everything that we do that way God. um talk so to me like about what that is and we can go to sam over, ash i just worked on a homie nah, just just get like a sound emitter like a kid's baby thing and turn it to like ocean waves and play it behind everything we do <laughs> nice no matter the style the built-in no loop. matter what we do play that because that way you can always tie it i i feel I'm, I got this. Well, we, we could just do that with Spotify. We could throw that up and just throw fucking whatever white noise well, you could possibly find. I figured out how to build a sound booth in the warehouse. <laughs> we did. Not, we learned new tricks not, while oh, yeah. you were gone, yeah. Jordan. Did you? Jordan? So Derb has been working on this video Engineer, of how to right? use true tubes. We're not name dropping, but it's going to happen a lot here over the next minute. What? So Derb's figuring out or uh, making this video on how to use it true to tubes inappropriately and then at the very end it's going to cut to him using true tubes appropriately i seen the i seen the video did you see it yeah did you see ben's part he i got loved dressed it up. i loved i loved it so much i was thinking I of it, it so fucking today. much the syrup at the tree i don't even know why we didn't say using it for syrup we said using it for pancakes. I like it because it's so much more ambiguous and weird. Yes. No, I love it. I, everything we did was gold. I'm proud of the work. That was so amazing. In. I got to eat a bark-filled piece of pancake on film. It was awesome. <laughs> I may or may not have smoked some material out of one. And we know I don't what? prefer tobacco I did, products. I did see that so. right out of the plastic tube, but it's okay. I use mine for smoking. Yep. That it was, was a golden line. commercial. Be prepared. It's going to be great. Be you guys are going to love it. Uh, We're going to share it when it's done. Miss. There was a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we weren't giving them all away. <laughs> it's not all of them. <laughs> but but there are more. There are yeah. more to come. It's going to be so and good. And who though. knows what makes the final cut. But I think there's going to be multiple volumes. Oh, I think there's going to end up being three or four of them. And it's going to keep going. So this, it's <laughs> fun. I like doing stuff like that. I like feeling indulged. Yeah. Then we can go to another product and use them completely inappropriately. <laughs> Just keep going and going. Um, I can't wait to make our fake commercials. I want to do commercials for this so bad. No, we're gonna. I've been practicing. My we're gonna. Voice. Your video voice. You're gonna be oh, our Mr. Movie Phone. I will do whatever you guys want. Me to do. Welcome. To Thank you for joining today. <laughs> today with Ben welcome, Thomas. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> and welcome back with yeah, it's Ben. <laughs> I mean, I've I've always wanted to do one live radio show, and I just want to end it no matter where I'm broadcasting from. Thank you, Cleveland. Good night. Always, it's been it's been a dream of mine since I was a child.
Well, if we go to the Cleveland, I'm sorry, my phone's atrocious. <laughs> uh, what what was that oh, word? Repressive. Oppressive. Oppressive. <laughs> you do not oppress me with your brass. With your brass. Oh, your brass man. is oppressive. Fucking brass. Oh, brass oh, instruments <laughs> and your loud noises. <laughs> so my neighbors, I only have one. Well, it's a couple, but I have one immediate neighbor, and they're musicians also. So if we make absurd amounts of noise at my house, they will be fine as long as it's you know. Oh, I've got hours. I've got a noise pass. It's more of it's it's not quiet. That's all. You got to be prepared for that. I mean, I live quasi hood. <laughs> I can pretty much do whatever I want. Oh, I decided what we can, <laughs> we can call. You know how we call this the mothership. Beaming in live from the other ship. Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to call my house the time capsule. The time so capsule. I have to set up there <laughs> again. It'll be the time capsule. It's slowly like turning it. older. Back here at the time the capsule. You guys are both nervously playing with your chords. Is there something we need to talk oh, about? No, I mean, I drank all my coffee. So family. now my, my fidget has changed I feel from like playing with my coffee. It means I should roll a blunt. That's where I That's what my fingers go. should be We're doing. We're continue this delightful conversation. Can we do that's that while what my fingers smoking. should be doing. I'm fizzling. You're fizzling. Why are you fizzling? Jordan, why are you fizzling, man? Wake me up before, before I go. 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 That's why I'm tired. So my job in life is Fucking to tired, yo. Songs in people's heads. I'm out here tired. Living in the streets. Living in the streets. Screech. Out here in the streets. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually playing hooky from work right now, and my boss is texting me. And Travis, if you're listening, I'm sorry. I love you. I'll call you later. Um, but um, it, workload's been crazy. I, I know you guys deal with it too. That at some point you just got to be like, okay, you know what I'm gonna do today? <laughs> what, what I'm gonna sit back, relax, and smoke a bunch of weed with my friends and hang out. That was what today needed to be. You know, I'm enjoying it. I guess is what I'm saying. So Sunday, I Glad hurt my it. shoulder, and I feel much, much better. Good. But I have been physically taking it easy. And that also means that I've been pretty much mentally taking it easy as well, because right. when I show up to an appointment and it's like, well, I'm, I'm kind of injured, so I'm just going to take it easy. I'm going to get done what I can get done. Right. You know, you'll get quality, but maybe not as much It'll just progress. Um, but just, like, knowing that, like, I'm taking it easy, like just already that, like that sigh of, we're just going to get done what we get done yeah. today. Doesn't have to be a marathon, like that mental taking away that mental stress mm-hmm. of needing to reach a milestone just for the sake of reaching a milestone. It's like, we're going to get progress today and we'll get as far as that's we the, get. That's the and beauty of big projects. You can just be like, yeah, <laughs> nope. and, and it, I, you know and I, I consider it a partial session i'd rather do what i call a partial session than cancel on a client but well even but even we still get still, progress we stay excited yeah you're working towards the goal yeah as long as you're getting stuff done it's a good day yep i remember there was there was daunting times filling in large body areas of of wait you just packed in black in this little spot like that's all we're okay but at long run, I, I was still three hours and four hours of tattooing or what, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you don't, when it's, when you're doing large projects, it's, it's really important to, to look at a, your artist has a vision B grand scheme, be patient because like, I, I remember doing my, my first big leg piece in, in specific, just being like, I don't, I don't understand conceptually what's going on until the very end. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Oh, that's why you added so much black there. That's why there was a whole session of you just packing in black to a thing. I get it now. Mm -hmm. I guess, I guess trust the, trust the process. Yeah. There were definitely some sessions on my back and my back was so big and like Mm -hmm. so much the same colors. It's like, Oh, So this is our fourth session in a row of just right. seashell and tangerine, huh? Uh-huh. Cool. Oh, now you're using right. half seashell, half white. All right, lots Great. of excitement yeah. in terms of variation Great. there. Uh, the Great. back was a hard one for me too because <laughs> progress you, you, was always happening, but there were some middle sessions where you, it was like you just get done and be the like, "There's so much left." <laughs> right. 
your back though it's like oh look at all that magic that just happened and yeah that yeah. all made sense just fell in everything place. had purpose yeah right just wizarded in, in there and always new things to see so i i can't imagine the trust in the creative process of bio because for me i don't understand how conceptually the things are built and I know that it involves a, a lot of layering and a lot of like color depth and just things that are out of my non-artist wheelhouse for, mm -hmm. you know. So I couldn't imagine being a bio collector and just being like, so you just go pack in a bunch of like ring today? Like I, that that chest level to me is nuts. Yeah, it's not right where it's just like you let go completely where you're just like. Oh, yeah. well, well, anything that you're about to do is going to be cool. Yeah, yeah, I love Let's it. Do it I all. I love it, I love it, I love it. Like, that's like the range I give to Guy. Like, it's like, I don't even have to see it all. I don't even know what you're going to do. I know it's going to be dope. No matter what I imagine, you're going to imagine it cooler. Mm -hmm. I mean, <sighs> full range, full trust, but it comes with, it comes with the, you know, the got to earn that. It, yeah, comes with the clout. Got to earn that. Comes, comes with, with the, the clout. clout. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Can we make shirts that say that? Ben, I clout. noticed you have a yellow lighter over there. I do. Is, is that the one that I may have been accused of taking from Red Tree? It's not my lighter. I was just accused of taking it. You'll ghost like it. And nobody will even know. I've had that lighter for a significant amount of time. Okay, well, it's only been a few days. Significant amount of time. I kind of want to blame Sam. I don't know if it was Sam or not. Y'all need to just realize that if you don't leave your shit there, no one will take it. Mm. I walk off with them by accident sometimes. So no, 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 no. What I'm saying is, if you bring your own lighter and don't rely on there being a community, I always lighter, have my torch. Right. So no, I, I don't I feel have a lighter. There. That's I where I'm have like, quit bitching. Just put your lighter back in your pocket and keep your lighter. Or I mean, like. Like then your lighter won't get stolen if most, you pay attention to your lighter. The two most stolen items are made by the same company. Ball so you bags, gaslighting? Are you saying it's their fault? Are their lighters getting stolen? And lighters. So you're saying Bic is responsible for the socioeconomic the downfall of our economy? <laughs> 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 I want to be in the meeting. At bit, <laughs> they were like, All right, How guys. extremely misogynistic. How do, we, how do we make this more no, disposable? No, no. It has to fit inside the pocket. I, all pockets. <laughs> it has to be exactly 37, 8. And it's got to be very comfortable so you don't even know you put it in there. And make them so alike that you can look at somebody and be like, Fuck you. I got this yellow lighter. I fucking like her. So I, I just think it's an amazing marketing ploy. Make your shit so disposable and matching and interchangeable that everybody steals each other's shit and you gotta buy more. I like mm. it. Uh, I do no, like good old fashioned blue, blue big pens the best. Just draw black or blue. But if you're I'm just like sketching with a pen. I just gotta be old big. <laughs> I like the black good ones. Good old fashioned big. I uh they just they work great. Yeah, they work great. Mm -hmm. I can't those draw just, those basic ass fucking gray ones. Can we just talk about it for a second? I can't draw at all. Ben, that's all. great intro. This? I can't I do anything tried. with that information. I've tried. <laughs> I have tried. I've tried to be taught. What if? It was my job to learn to draw there. For you a just while. couldn't do it. You it tried. It's just one of those like the muscle memory never came. <laughs> no. Your wife's more artistically inclined than she lets on. Meh. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, she does. I feel feed like her family with taking photos. What if so. I teach you and your child art together? How about you teach my kid? How about <laughs> like, I just nah. teach you together? Because, <laughs> like, we would be hanging out together, anyways. <laughs> Am I going to turn down an opportunity to paint with my kid and you? Never. Or draw or stack bricks or. Because we are pretty good at stacking bricks. She's been making some <laughs> big towers, man. A lot. She's, She's been, <laughs> they're getting there. They're, and they're sturdy. So, yeah, like let's hang out and create absolutely all day, every day. But uh, I don't, uh, I would never discourage my child learning. 
I just, I know where I'm at. I just. I, I, I know me. I'll fake it. We'll have fun. Fake it till you make it and watch. You come up with some rad new style just trying to fake it and then it turns into your own thing. That's how it happens. I'm always in for making things. Came home yesterday. They're out on the sidewalk drawing shit. Tried walk chalk. She's like, Daddy, chalk. I'm like, in bed. It was a good time. Yeah. I can't draw. Neither can she. It worked out great. I figure as long as we stay on the same level. Yeah, Maybe we'll raise you up together. together. The Provide yeah. the, providing the tools. Unintimidating, starting from like one. This is how you hold a pencil. Mm. Maybe two. We can go past that. <laughs> we, can go, we can go further. I don't know. My little baby doesn't have motor skills yet. Uh, I, I feel like She's there's no good. wrong way to hold a pen or pencil. I feel like being in the habit of holding your pen or pencil or paintbrush or tattoo machine holding it in several different positions and being comfortable to work you utilitarianly you with sure your hand in different mean. ways. I feel like that's really important in like the longevity of your hand. So I would never discourage like, like, Perhaps. Oh, you want to hold it like that? Well, let's get you one of these Easter egg shaped pencil holders golden, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, she's pretty rad. She's been drawing faces. Encourage the natural movement. She, she. Have you seen her her drawings? She puts little cheekies on uh -huh. everything. <laughs> yeah, that is so cute. Little cheekies. Little baby. But yeah, I mean, like it's real shit. I can, I'll create. I always yeah. have to create. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to teach you how to take ideas, put them to paper, and then sure. before you know it, you'll be like, all right, maybe I'm ready to tattoo. I used to be able to draw, like halfway this one tattoo flash eagle mm -hmm. and it was still jank but like it looked like an eagle so i was cool with that it was an ugly one but it got done do you know how i would teach you how to draw an <laughs> eagle we're gonna go kayaking and we're gonna look at an eagle Aww. it's gonna be the best art lesson Aww. i'm gonna see i'm gonna be like you see the shape of its breast and belly do you see that and you're gonna be Ooh. like yeah yeah. Speaking of, eagles, and I'll be like, remember that at the top of Angels Landing, we saw California condors up there. How what? cool! How did you leave this part out? Forgot about it. They said eagle. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, but nice. yeah, California condors. How big are they? They were. They got to be impressive. They were massive, and they live super high up there. Like, now those are like the the biggest birds in the United States, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think their wingspan gets like eight to ten feet or something like that. That's like impressive. Pterodactyls, I feel basically. like that would but be a little like, bit intimidating. They just look like life. a giant vulture. That's what they look like. I mean, that's what they are. Yeah, but they're massive, Can like a I dinosaur ride, vulture. Ride. You just see them on you see them on branches, and you'd be like, "Is that a fucking turkey vulture?" And then you realize like how far away they are for how big they are. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, that's right, yeah, yards. right. Oh yeah, that's a tree next to it, not a bush. <laughs> All right, um, guys, well, we're we're approaching the three o'clock hour. Is it really? Yeah. Your clock is wrong. Yeah. Bro. I've been looking at this one. Bro, you hard got me. <laughs> My brain has been tripping. The I'm like, there is no way it's two o'clock. <laughs> looking at my phone. Just didn't compute. Yeah. No, it's it's Jordan didn't reset Time his clock. Time traveled. So, essentially, today, what we learned is that we should go get some barbecue. We should get barbecue? some barbecue. Do you know I haven't tried that Watch the barbecue place. place at North Market? What is it called? Boar and Barrel or something like that? Um, I have had Boar and Barrel. <laughs> is it good? And I will tell you a crazy ass Boar and Barrel story off air. Okay. Well, <laughs> crazy fair. Ass. On that note, let's uh, we'll wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. Podcast, yay. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate Ooh, it. Thanks ben. for yeah, us again, Last ben. minute, that was awesome. I'm was super awesome. happy you fucking yeah. came on. Appreciate an awesome breakfast. I love your bike. Yeah. We're going to get mm. some footage Thanks. from the Cincinnati Tattoo Convention this weekend. It's one of the Villain Arts Sunday, events. Sunday, um, Sunday. We're going to go Sunday and check that out. So if you happen to be there, that'll be rad. Find us. We'll be walking around obtrusively and obnoxiously being us uh, with cameras. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a few like three to five minute little quick videos of people like while they're getting worked on and maybe get get an idea of what the floor looks like and 
you know, what, what the new age of tattoo conventions is going to be like. This will be my first event. Have you been to any? You haven't been to any events yet either, have you? Not since before COVID. Well, Philadelphia uh, or Cincinnati, one of the two were my last ones. Mask up, bring your hand, Sandy, and let's get it done. Yeah, Ben, I hope <clears throat> you're able to join us. But if not, it's gonna, I think it's definitely going to be me, Jordan, and then uh, Adam Rogers, who we had yes. on a few weeks ago, and he's a lot of fun. So he'll be excited to be around people again. Um, so we'll have a review of that. We'll have some footage. It'll be a good episode to tune into. Welcome back, Jordan. Good to have you on Thanks, guys. Good to have you back Two in episodes the studio. without me, and I am at home once again. You were missed. Thank you. you I missed you. Always. Thanks, Vaughn. I missed you. I missed everybody. All right, guys. Well, Jordan, where can everybody find you at? <laughs> JordanRuckusTattoo.com if you would like to book or check out my Instagram for portfolios and cool stuff like that. Jordan Ruckus Tattoo. Bam. Everything. Jordan Ruckus Tattoo. Ben, do you even want to share a handle? You're not the most social. Well, Ben's Ben. You want to find me, dude. Ben's phone number, <laughs> 614. <laughs> Unless you want to buy a roof. Okay, if you want to buy a roof or a me. Harley, he does a or good. A he does a good roof. I do a good. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find us collectively at tattoocollecting.com or you can find us on Instagram or Facebook at the Tattoo Collecting Podcast. Yeah. All righty, guys. Well, we will see you Tattoo next Thursday. Podcast. Stay safe. Stay healthy.